afternoon. All audio and video checks are good from webinar. I'm now pointing to the background. in listen-only mode. Welcome to the first public hearings of the City of Tampa's FY 2023 budget hearings held this day on September 6, 2022. Roll call. Carlson? Here. Vieira? Here. Maniscalco? Here. Herte? Here. Goose? Here. Miranda? Here. And Citro? Here. We have a physical form. Mr. Massey. Uh, good evening. This is a special call public hearing of Tampa City Council being held on Tuesday, September 6, 2022 
at 5.01 p.m. in City Council Chambers on the third floor of Old City Hall, 315 East Kennedy Boulevard here in Tampa, Florida. The purpose of this special call public hearing is the consideration by Tampa City Council of the tentative fiscal year or FY 2023 millage rate, operating budget, and capital improvement program budget for the City of Tampa. The public is invited to participate in this special call public hearing for the purpose of permitting any and all citizens desiring to do so to submit their criticisms, recommendations, or suggestions in writing or make oral comments and ask questions concerning the tentative FY 2023 City of Tampa Millage Rate Operating Budget and Capital Improvement Budget. Um, the public is able to attend this meeting in person or view it via cable television on Spectrum Channel 640 or Frontier Channel 15 or by the internet via www.tampa.gov slash livestream. The public is also able to participate in this meeting during public comment for a maximum of three minutes per speaker, either here in person in City Council Chambers or virtually by way of Communication Media Technology or CMT. However, the use of CMT does require pre-registration with the City Clerk's Office. Direction for pre-registration are included in the notice of the meeting and on the agenda. Can I please have a motion waiving the City so Council Standard Rules of Procedure to allow public comment and preparance by staff Second. by CMT? We have a motion made by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. I will now entertain a motion to open all public hearings Hello. for consideration of tentative fiscal year 2023 millage rate and operating and capital improvement budgets for the city of Tampa. The motion was made by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Vieira? Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Rohiro? Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, will the finance chair please read the first public hearing statement? Thank you, Mr. Rohiro. Uh, this is the first public hearing statement. This is the first public hearing statement for the City of Tampa 2023 budget. The proposed mill rate is 6.2076 mills, which is 9.60 more than the rollback millage rate of 5.6641 mills. Property tax funds are used to support the general fund, operating budget, community redevelopment agencies, funds of the city. The general fund includes such department as fire rescue and police, human resources, parks and recreation, sir. Mr. O'Hara, would you please proceed with your presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can I have the presentation up on the screen, please? Thank you. Good evening, Council. Dennis Rojero, Chief Financial Officer. Thank you for allowing us to uh, present briefly to you this evening. Let's see if I can move it from here. Look at that. You see our agenda? Again, a very brief overview of the highlights for fiscal year 23. Our fiscal year 23 to 27 capital improvement program, five years, coinciding with our debt program, and then a reminder as to the remaining budget calendar. And here again is our recommended budget, $1.866 billion, an increase of about 3.5% compared to the current year. And you see here our breakout of the major funds. Again, I'll point out that the bedrock of our presentation, our recommendation, our discussions, and our negotiations were five primary things. The housing needs, which we've discussed, and I'm sure we'll discuss again, public safety needs of the community, maintaining and increasing our levels of service to meet demand, whether that's additional staffing, and there is, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Pay increases, again, for the retention, reward, and recruitment of valuable employees. You'll recall that over the last 20 years, we've pretty much kept pace with inflation with our negotiated across the board increases. Uh, that came to a sudden change this year, which we'll talk about. Number four, we continue to emphasize supporting our fund balance. And number five, pursuing our capital improvement program and debt program to do those major and expensive projects that we need. I will note that the increase you see here, 3.5%, is despite the challenges that we've continued to face. Again, we're at a 40-year high inflationary figure nationwide. It's a little over 8%. In the Tampa uh, metropolitan statistical area, it's over 11%. We haven't, 
I've never seen that in my career. Very few have seen it in their career. The price increases, which we continue to experience, and we'll talk more about that, and a very, very volatile economic environment. So of that 3.5% increases, that's due to a number of things. Additional staffing, again, Council, we heard your priorities. Housing positions, transportation positions, water, parking, city planning, and a number of other departments have additional staff in this recommended budget. There are additional community redevelopment area contributions, which we've talked about, and I'll highlight again. Additional police, fire, and rescue equipment, higher fuel costs. They're going down, but they're still high, and we'll see how long they last on this decline. Uh, the OPEC plus agencies just voted to curb their production because they're, they're displeased with crude oil prices decreasing. So we'll see what kind of effect that has nationwide, well, and worldwide. Additional funding for vehicles, another $30 million for vehicles across the spectrum. Continued water and wastewater projects, of course. Recommended expansion of our solid waste capital program, which we've recently discussed. Facilities projects, increased funding for parks and recreation projects, and, of course, the recently negotiated salary increases with the contracted employees. And, uh, well, before I move on, of course, you can see here, uh, as we pointed out before, between the general fund and the enterprise fund, that's three quarters. In fact, it's over three quarters of our total budget. So we break those down, down here as we typically do. On the left, you got the general fund, <clears throat> pardon me, with Tampa Police and Tampa Fire Rescue, Parks and Recreation, the Tampa Convention Center, Neighborhood and Community Affairs, and Government Support Operations. On the right, the enterprise funds. Again, these are those agencies that have to operate like a business. They have to make what in the private sector would be a profit. Water, wastewater, and solid waste being the primary ones. And of course, you see parking department and golf courses. Two important drivers of our property tax revenues. You see here of the total property taxes of just under 300 million over 42 million of that will go to the community redevelopment agencies. And you see, if you look to the left, the remaining amount of property tax revenue is woefully insufficient to cover our fire and police expenses. Again, we do this to give you and the viewing public the context of property tax revenues. There are most significant general fund revenue, but as you see here, they're by no means the only general fund revenue. Again, here's a breakdown of the employee classifications and the, excuse me, the negotiated increases they're receiving. <coughs> PBA, the IAFF, and the ATU at 9.5%. Of the non-collective bargaining employees, the appointed unclassifieds are 95 also. Professionals and supervisors are at 9.5%. Managers are at 6%. Elected officials at 3%. And the directors, deputy directors, and or, excuse me, deputy administrators and administrators, the decision remains pending on those. Turning our attention once again to the general fund balance, as we've discussed many, many times, and we'll discuss again a very important metric of our financial health, our ability to handle future economic risk. Again, this is a very, very volatile economic environment, and thus a critical benchmark for the rating agencies. You see, as we pointed out before, our reversion to our, what I would describe as recently typical, 24, 23%, very, very good. It's a very, very nice, steady plan and well above our policy of 20%. As I like to tell everyone, our policy of 20% is a floor, not a ceiling, and we are well in excess of that. And these percentages have come to be expected by the credit rating agencies. I would, be, uh, I would be remiss if I did not once again thank Council for their support. As, as you all know from discussions with me, this is very, very important from our perspective and hopefully uh, in the context of that, very, very important from your perspective. So we appreciate your continued support of keeping these levels uh, high. 
Moving on to housing, again, one of our primary pillars for negotiating and discussing, discussing and recommending the budget this year. You see the city's, the city's history of housing-related funding, approximately $350 million over 21 years for housing-related funding. From federal, state, of course, the American Rescue Plan Act, the community redevelopment agencies, and relatively recently, the general fund. I understand that, again, there may be potential for even more funding from the community redevelopment agencies based on the additional funding they're getting from the property, property tax increases. But uh, I think uh, very impressive history. You see, uh, following the Great Recession, two years of spiked funding for housing-related activity and then a very large spike following the beginning of the pandemic. Moving to our capital improvement program, again, just under $2 billion of five-year uh, five projects and uh, consistent with our current year plan, which was also approximately two, uh, $2 billion. We're continuing to do a great deal of projects, both in fiscal year 22 and moving into fiscal year 23, and I think that's pretty apparent. Significant increases in the CRA, in parks and recreation, in solid waste, uh, continuing in water and wastewater with the pipes program. And I'll highlight some of the major projects here. First up, the comprehensive infrastructure for Tampa's neighborhoods. You see that in East Tampa and Forest Hills, in McFarland Park and Virginia Park. The pipes program, again, well, the water treatment plant, the wastewater treatment plant, mains and distribution line improvements, collection projects, and wastewater, a great deal of funding up to now, and we anticipate a great deal of funding going forward for the next couple of years. A reminder that the PIPES program is a 20-year, nearly $3 billion plan. So you will continue to see significant projects and significant funding associated with that program. And the Parks and Recreation, of course, the East Tampa Recreational Complex, Gandy Park South and A.J. Polonis Park improvements, improvements in the Sulphur Springs area, Wayne C. Pappy Hyde Park improvements, and of course, the uh, ADA improvements. We have $200,000 every year program for ADA improvements throughout the Parks and Recreation system. The Solid Waste Program, which we've recently discussed, the headquarters and fleet relocation from Spruce Street, the Waste to Energy Facility Plant, again, that we've recently discussed. In Mobility, the Build Grant, the West River Walk, the Tampa Multimodal Network and Safety Improvements, and Stormwater Projects. We've had a great deal of success, not only in the funding for stormwater projects, but in the results of that funding. More work is needed and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. <coughs> Logistics and asset management, public safety training facilities are in the five-year capital improvement program, as is TPD impound facility and offices, fleet maintenance decentralization. We've talked a little bit about that and the efficiencies that can be gained from that. Uh, also in the fleet maintenance division, you see the citywide electric vehicle charging infrastructure the wave of the future, and we need to plan for that, and you'll see that in this program. Following on the heels of our capital improvement program, because they are so closely linked, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, our anticipated debt program. Of course, uh, each debt issuance is a serious decision. Of course, you've got to weigh the costs now, the anticipated cost increases, you know, the intergenerational equity. Who pays for it? Do, does the current generation pay for it? Does the next generation pay for it? Does a combination of the generations pay for it? And, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, we're doing significant and important things, as we've talked about, and that takes significant money. Speaking of taking significant money, one of the ways for it to take a little bit less significant money is to have very, very high credit ratings. And as we've discussed before, and I'm sure we'll discuss again, that's what we have. It's always worth a reminder, I think, because they do go hand in hand with how much projects are going to cost. 
It also, as we discussed, reinforces Tampa's, reinforces Tampa's reputation as a fiscally sound and conservative organization. I will once again also remind uh, council and the viewers that unlike so many other areas of local government, our program is reviewed by an independent third party, by three independent third parties in most cases, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. We've talked about how they come in, they, they take an unbiased view, they look at where we've come what our, and what our plans are for the future, and you see, it refer you see them referenced here. The top, again, the issuer credit rating, that's uh, our version of the FICO score. On the far right, Standard & Poor's has given us the highest available, AAA. Fitch & Moody's has given us the second highest, so still room to grow, but very, very good organizational credit ratings. And uh, once again, I would be remiss if I did not thank Council for your support. We've taken, as we've discussed, big, bold steps, both in the projects and debt issuance areas. And you see the credit rating, credit rating agencies have taken notice. They've taken positive notice with 14 upgrades since 2011. Moving into our uh, debt plan, our capital improvement program includes general government issuances for the projects you see here. Again, the East Tampa Recreational Complex, Fire Station Number 24, Public Safety Training Facilities, Tampa Fire Rescue Maintenance and Supply Shop, Howard Avenue, Tampa Police Department offices, and the Fleet Maintenance Decentralization. You see towards the top, probably a 90 to $120 million program. We anticipate we'll take it in bites with short-term debt, eventually culminating and rolling it up into one long-term bond. As we have recently discussed, we'll also bring reimbursement resolution or resolutions to you so we can get started sooner rather than later and we can pay ourselves back for any debt service issuances. Now is uh, probably a good time to remind Council that any debt service we issue has to come to you and it will be accompanied as it always is with our business cases with our backup documentation, and with a great deal of information, because it is a serious decision. Water and wastewater, again, the pipes program, very, very large for 20 years. We don't know. You see at the top uh, there, fiscal year 23 or fiscal year 24, depending on when we anticipate we'll need the funding. It'll be in this forthcoming fiscal year, or maybe in fiscal year 24 but it is coming and it is significant. The solid waste debt issuance that we have discussed, again, there's a lot to do. We've talked about the potential for a rate study to coincide with this debt service. Again, we'll be coming to you next month with your workshop to offer our business case, the justification, and a, a great deal of funding information. And the stormwater debt issuance, again, very, very successful. I think, uh, I think just about everybody would say that, but more needs to be done, approximately $61 million. The continuation of the comprehensive infrastructure for Tampa's neighborhoods, the Lower Peninsula Southeast region, among the other projects that you see here. And our principal outstanding debt service. Now that you've seen where we anticipate going and what we'll ask for your approval in the future, this is where we're at right now. Just a little refresher. Green line shows the principal outstanding debt for water and wastewater. Those are the only enterprise agencies we have debt service for right now. And the blue line shows the general government debt. That includes any number of items. The existing stormwater debt, the community investment taxes, the aquarium, with Florida Aquarium, excuse me, our convention center mobility and facilities improvements. I've said it before, I'll say it again, this is a very, very good debt profile. A nice and smooth decrease over time, no surprises for future city councils, no surprises for future mayors, and indicates we have a great deal of long-term debt capacity for those projects that we just discussed. And the next 
second budget hearing council is September 20th. And uh, as always, uh, we genu genuinely appreciate your support, your continued questions, your continued comments, and uh, we can answer any questions you have. And Thank is you, there Chair. Any comments or questions for Mr. O'Hara? Councilman Carlson. Could you um, start the slideshow again, please? I want to ask you kind of slide by slide. Certainly. I think. Can I have the slide up? You want to start from the beginning, sir? Yes, please. So the first question I'll throw out, um, you talked about in the in the budget summary, you talked about um, how we had ARPA funds last year and we don't have ARPA funds. So the mm -hmm. increase, did you say 3.5% or 3.8%? I can't remember. The total budget increases uh, a little less than 3.5 or a little more than 3.5%. So if you, if you took out, if, if we didn't have the ARPA money last year, what would be the increase between the budget last year without ARPA money versus the budget this year? I don't know, but I'll circle back with that percentage for you. Do you know how much? Because it, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, how much was the total ARPA money last total year? Total ARPA funding was $80 million over two years. Of course, we allocated all that $40 million in the current year and $40 million next year. And were there other, any other significant um, budget changes from last year or this year? Oh, certainly. The total I mean, budget, of course, includes the general fund, our like enterprise more than funds. Anything that was like more, more as big as ARPA or larger? Um, yeah, we paid off. Uh, I'll draw your attention, for instance, to debt service. That's nearly a 30% reduction, for instance, from the current fiscal year. We paid off a number of banknotes and refunded some existing debt for savings. And so then, um, can we go to the, the next slide, please? Mm-hmm. Um, and the next one. So you talk about the CRA money here, mm -hmm. and then in the summary, um, in the mayor's letter, it talks about something, I forgot the word and I closed it already, but the, like our obligation to pay CRA. Yes. Um, I've been advocating for putting a cap on the downtown and channel district CRAs. Mm -hmm. How come you all haven't come out and considering the way this, this chart looks, it's really obvious that we need to move money out of the CRA, and half of that is downtown and channel district. How come you all haven't advised us to, or asked us to uh, put a cap on those two? Wouldn't that be a great source of, uh, you know, the, the police department needs a lot more resource, fire department needs a lot more resource. We could just pull it out of, um, take that 20 million a year and put it into public service or parks or something. Pull it, yes, pulling out funding from any number of CRAs would free that up for potential expenditures across the general fund spectrum. I don't know that it's our purview to recommend, re recommend that or if it's the CRA board's purview to advocate for that. It, it, yeah, it is a CRA and I've been pushing for it to be separate, but since it's on the same chart together, mm -hmm. um, it, it makes it look like it's pretty obvious that we need to move money. Can you go to the next slide, please? Yes, sir. And, um, I, and, and this context of the, of the increases, and I said this before when we talked about it, it doesn't give the historical context of um, the, the suffering through the Great Recession and everything, and I'm sure any of these groups could stand up and show us the, the longer term timeline, but it, if you look at 9.5% in a given year, uh, if you compare it to inflation, it's the same, but if you compare it to to the small increases or lack of increases for many, many years, um, it's, uh, it's, it's really partially catching up. And so mm -hmm. I, somehow I wish we could explain that to the public because I don't think anybody would be against in these kind of increases, but on the surface they, they look large. I'm very in favor of them, but on the surface they look large. But if you look at the context, they're not even catching up with where we should have been if we had been able to keep up with it. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? Understood. Uh, before we do that, if you don't mind, perhaps we can create a slide that shows you that historical context. Yeah, just, it, I mean, if we went back to um, before the Great Recession, so like 2005, mm -hmm. and, and just look at the percentage increases or, or something like that, just to show the timeline of what, how it went up, because I think there were several years where it didn't really go up at all and, it, and didn't keep up with inflation. Um, go we to the next slide, please. That. Yes, sir. So this one, um, it doesn't show the context also. So now you're now in, you, you all focus on percentage a lot. I note that percentage is important, but you're, you're saying we've gone down from 27 or 28% to 23? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I think the floor is like 20. So yes, remember going into the Great Recession, before we knew there was a Great Recession, I was pushing to increase this balance mm -hmm. um, because the last administration rated it. 
and uh, now we may be going to a recession. All signs are that we're going into a recession, but now our percentage is lower than it's been since um, since we've been in office. Aren't, aren't you worried about a rainy day fund? Because you, in theory, you've only got three percent there, and you also said that the the um, the bonding agencies or the rating agencies are, are counting on us to have more than twenty percent. So where's our rainy day fund? This is our rainy day fund, and if I can if I can uh, speaking to your point about context. Of course, as, as we've explained before, the amount goes up, but the percentage typically stays the same or can go down because it's ratioed to the entirety of the general fund budget. So you've got a little over $120 million, and yet it's 23%, whereas back in 2017, $90 million got you 23%. And isn't it, isn't it true that, um, and I don't remember the exact year, but when Pam Iorio left in the Great Recession, Mm -hmm. around 2009, 2010, she had saved about $150 million, isn't it? I believe so. I think it was about 30-odd percent. So, so that, that $150 million would have been off this chart. That's how much it was. And the next administration brought it down. I think the lowest was at $80 million or slightly below um, during the boom in the economy, which mm -hmm. I think was reckless. But anyway, the, the, um, I think we need to look at the larger context of this. And, then, and knowing that this is our rainy day fund, and we've only maybe got 3% Wiggle room, um, I can't add that fast. How much is 3%? 3%. 3 percent? Three percent. Three million. Oh, it's about five oh, million. Uh, above twenty percent. Yeah. If you if you took the so if you if the if the rating agencies say you have to keep or bonding agencies say you have to keep it at twenty minimum, mm -hmm. so we had to use what is that three million or something? It's about uh, twenty three percent is about fourteen million dollars more than twenty percent. How much is just the three per, three percent part? About four, fourteen million. Fourteen million. Mm -hmm. So if we if we needed the 14, 14 million and a $1.9 billion budget is nothing for a rainy day fund, right? We can't, we can't dip past 20 because then our rates would go up. Uh, the rating agencies would, would uh, change their ratings of us, correct? They would look at it with a jaundiced eye, with, but I'll caveat that. Uh, and, the, and the global pandemic was a perfect example. You had many, many agencies dipping into their rainy day funds. Again, we were very fortunate. It didn't hit us as bad as we thought it would. And we had other agencies stepping in to help us, right? Yes, so, sir. Exactly. So the question is, if we're going to a recession, we see if anybody who's watching their housing price on Zillow sees it, it was going up, up, up. Now it's going down, down, down. Mm -hmm. And so whether that's right or not, we don't know. But there's lots of calls that we're heading into recession. You never know until after mm -hmm. it's already started. Yes, sir. Um, if we hit a recession and there's there's problems in the economy and that, that's when the community needs more services instead of less, we've only got 14 million before our, our before we hit the yes, before the ratings the change. Mm -hmm. uh, and are I, you worried about that or all? I am not worried about it, but let, but and and because there's a there's a nuance. The rating agencies they will scrutinize us, but they will to their to their credit they will scrutinize us in the context of what's going on at the macro level. For example, a global pandemic. So I, I can't definitively say to you that our ratings will go down if it's less than 20% and there's a, a, new, uh, a Great Depression similar to the 1930s, for instance. But so our rainy day fund is that 120 odd million. But don't you we think like that to keep it up? The percentage, so 2020, 2021, okay, we we're in, in COVID at that time, we had higher percentages. Now we're, we're cutting into it when we're about to maybe go into recession. Um, anyway, I made that point. Uh, can you go to the next mm -hmm. slide, please? Certainly. Um, there's a lot I can say about this. Next slide, please. Oops. Next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of my questions is, uh, next slide again. Um, between these slides, is there, okay, you see the pipes budget, you see the, the stormwater budget. So mm -hmm. a question for the, for the public to understand, is there anything in this budget for pure? Is there anything... There toilet tap, pure. There's nothing in this budget. One point nine billion dollars. Nothing that's going to pay for pure. No, sir. But I will offer you one caveat. Again, in the interest of transparency, there remains a purify pure project from previous city council approvals in the capital improvement plan. I think it's just over two million dollars. But there's no additional funding in this five-year period. Um, and then the can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. Uh, next, uh, well, uh, on the on the parks project yes, in the in the summary also, uh, mayor talks about how we're we're working on a citywide parks plan, mm -hmm. but that started like three years ago, um, and this council passed three and a half years ago a request to have a citywide bicycle plan, a citywide sidewalk plan that was rolled into the mobility plan. But to my knowledge, the mobility plan's not done either. 
Do you have any idea when these are going to be done? I mean, are, are they even going to be done before the election, or, or are we just going to be in constant planning stage? Does I do mean? not. I don't know if uh, anyone knows an anticipated time frame for completion. I mean, it's oh, great that I we're planning, but it seems like we're planning forever. And, and I think what people want to know is when are their parks going to get fixed and improved? And also, I should make this statement. It was this council and the CRA board uh, that pushed for Fairbanks Community Center to be renovated. Uh, the last administration had refused 175000 to renovate it. Uh, we asked for it to be rebuilt, and I was thinking ballpark three to five million. It came out at like 18 million or 14, I forgot the number, some huge amount. But there's uh, previous administration spent 32 million on Julian Lane Park, that was a park, and then we spent 32 million, now it's a park. Um, uh, and, and part of that was $12 million on a boathouse. Uh, people around the city are concerned that all their parks are falling apart, and there's also concern. Uh, you know, the other day flooding, um, since Gene's up there, uh, Henderson and Dale Mabry was flooded. I think there were six or seven cars, including a truck, that were stuck. And people think the stormwater project's not working now, that it's a waste of money and that these projects are not moving fast enough. I don't want to get deep in the weeds, but just to throw those ideas out. Uh, Council, if, if I could just respond on a couple items. Gene Duncan, Inf Infrastructure Mobility. Uh, on the stormwater project there is a final piece that the department of transportation has in their work program that will allow all that water on dale maybe to get into the beautiful trunk line that we just built that goes into the bay we're really excited about that we actually have an update meeting with them tomorrow afternoon with secretary gwynn and we'll get the latest schedule on when that work is going to occur we do have a citywide bicycle plan sidewalk plan our moves plan which is our updated comprehensive transportation plan for the entire city is essentially complete. We are planning to go out with one last uh, round of public meetings in anticipation of the referendum coming along in November so we can refresh inputs and refresh the topic with folks, hopefully get some interest out there of people's uh, desires for transportation funding. And so once that's complete, we'll look and see if we can get the penny. And depending on that decision, we'll move forward one way or another to try to find ways to continue to build our system out to what it needs to be. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I can, I, I see it, see other, but I can go on. We can talk about these, some of these things afterwards. But um, could you go to the debt program slide? Yes, sir. The, ne the next one. One more. One more, sorry, the one with the chart. I'm sorry. What? There's a chart in here, I think. Oh, here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this doesn't go back in history. Can you tell us? So the total debt of the city then is about uh, uh, I can't add that. Enough, 14, 1.4 billion. Is am I adding that right? 1.35 billion. So yes. What's the what's the highest that the city's debt has ever been? It doesn't go back in history to show us. What is the highest? It, has the debt of the city ever been higher than this is right now? This only shows it going down, but you're proposing maybe adding mm -hmm. other um, other debt in the future, so the number is going to pop back up again, right? Yes, yes, sir. Do and you we, know if it's ever been larger than this, or is this the largest debt the city? I do already? not, but we can provide that his, historical, and we can also provide, I think, further to your point, what it will look like should council approve the additional debt issuances. You also mentioned the the waste. What are the waste rate, um, last week we talked about the, the, the waste energy plan and the waste mm -hmm. uh, system, and you, you said that there might be a, a, a rate increase, and I asked when and how much, and you yes, didn't know. Did, did you find the answer to that in the last week? We you still just do not it. know. That'll be up to our third-party rate feasibility uh, vendor. Mm -hmm. And then do you know the, the percentage that the, um, the, the money that's come in from ad valorem, do you know what the percentage increase of the dollar amount is? I do. Uh, it's about 40, uh, $44 million, I believe. What, what, and what's the percentage difference from last year? Oh, no, I'd have to calculate that, but I can provide that to you. I just know the dollar amount. Um, and what, what do you happen to know the percentage increase of the enterprise fund? Uh, I do not. I've got it in here, so if uh, I'll cir I can circle back at this meeting if you'd like, or I can email you. Well. Yeah, I think it's important for the public to know because uh, you know we have some people that are just moving to Tampa, and um, we're getting the same calls that Bob Enriquez and others are getting. That you know, why is my tax? Why are my taxes? Property taxes going up four times, mm -hmm. and that's because somebody before had um, a homestead exemption for 30, mm -hmm. 40 years, 
and they were paying a small amount and then somebody new buys it and it goes up and they should have been warned about it but they didn't know. But there are um, people who have uh, commercial property and properties that aren't under the 3% um, rule and, and they're experiencing higher increases and so mm -hmm. they, as we know, people are being kicked out of rental apartments and other places and it's important to know how much uh, more has come in in ad valorem taxes and how much more has come in from the enterprise revenues too. We okay. raised uh, water rates and now you're talking about raising waste rates. Last administration raised stormwater rates mm -hmm. and so um, all of this is having an impact on whether people can afford to live in their homes and afford to live in places that are rent. So I think it's important for the public to know those. We'll provide that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other comments or questions? Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, I, uh, I went ahead and pulled up the capital project detail on Pure, mm -hmm. um, and it says here mm -hmm. on page 32 of 47, I don't know which page of the budget this is, mm -hmm. uh, still haven't quite figured that out, um, but the actual to date expense for this purifying usable resources for the environment, which is pure. Sure. Yes, ma'am. And the description is providing up to um, 50 MGD mm, mil millions of gallons yeah. per day. Thank you, millions of gallons uh, a day for sustainable supply to the Hillsborough River Reservoir for lower Hillsborough River minimum flows and drought proofing the drinking water supply. It says the actual to date spent is about um, 425,000, but the mm -hmm. budget is 2.2 .2 million. Yes, ma'am. What, where, where is that other money? Is it just sitting in an account? Yes, we're holding it as part of the balance for that project. And I think that's might be where, what we're hearing from the public saying that they don't want that money in that fund. I see, I see, understood. Again, the funding has been appropriated by previous council action. So in order to remove it, it would take, again, council action. Okay, but we could move the remaining funds and put them into, say, housing, if we wanted to. We could not. And, no. and, that, no, okay. that's, and that's because uh, they're based on water revenue, and, okay. and water revenues have to be spent on water purposes. Understandable. Okay, thank you. So, yes, But we can take that with all of the things that we're trying to do with water and move it to... We could with one caveat. I would need to confirm that there's no obligations on that existing funding already that just hasn't okay. been spent. For instance, you might have funding that's been encumbered or obligated via contract. Okay, well, I would love to find that out, we'll actually. That so out. that would that would be something that would be wonderful. Thank you, because that's, we, at least I have, and I, I think my colleagues have gotten tons of emails about unfunding PURE. So any way we can do to, if it's, if it's possible to move it to another water project, I think everyone will be really happy with that. Thank we will you. circle back. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you very much for your presentation, sir. Just a couple yes, of sir. questions because you did have a slide on it on housing, but mm -hmm. it was confusing. How much are we dedicating towards housing um, between federal funding and general fund? Every, what is the total amount that's going towards housing in this budget? In fiscal year 23, it's a little, little over $26 million from and all this, funding sources. This does not include CRA? It does not include CRA, but I will look to Ms. Travis to uh, either confirm or rebut. <coughs> I know you have a separate presentation, but just so we know the numbers. So it'd be 26 million in our general fund and then in CRA. We have the envelope. How do you focus on Okay, perfect. So we have, good evening, Council. Nicole Travis, Administrative Development and Economic Opportunity. We have $26.4 million allocated from federal, state, and general fund revenue. That does not include any of the money that's already allocated for housing programs within your CRA. And on Thursday, I'll talk to you about reallocating some unappropriated or unspent funds um, from the current fiscal year and doing that in October. So this $26.4 million only includes federal, state, and general fund dollars. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll have additional funding, and we'll talk about that on Thursday. Correct. So $26 million today with this budget. Thank you very much. I yes. just wanted to clarify that because the slide was, was um, 
unclear. Uh, a couple of other things. I saw in this budget that there's a, uh, a slide for Vila Brothers Park, which I know in last year's budget, um, we were able to get all the funding for that. I see total budgeted to date is $2 million, mm -hmm. but the park is not finished and it's not near completion. And I work with the neighborhoods every few days we're talking, not every day, regarding the status of that. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because there are other projects that I've asked for and that you've you know, graciously put in this budget, the improvements to Wayne Pappy, um, the Veterans Memorial Park uh, in Carver City Lincoln Gardens. Yes, but I want to know when, you know, we're going to be looking at approving a new budget, yet we're not in completion mm -hmm. of a project from the last budget. Do you, I know OC is here or whomever, but uh, what is the status of Vila Brothers? Veterans Day is coming up. I know that they've been in contact with family members. We've done public meetings, mm -hmm. but I'd like to know what what is the hold up there? I'll yes, defer, I'll defer to Ms. Wynn. Good morning, Council. Good evening, Council. Sia Wynn, Administrative Neighborhood and Community Affairs. Councilman Maniscalco, the status of Vila Brothers is that we are in the process of getting the infrastructure part of the, of the project done. Um, after that's done, we will be uh, starting the actual parks improvement. We anticipate to have the project done by the uh, first quarter of next year, so within the next several six, months. Six months or so. Six, six, six months or so, months. the project, we expect to have that done. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Next question, sir, is yes, sir. I know that we do allocate funding uh, in each budget for different services outside like TBAE and other. Yes, sir. What about the NAACP? Do you happen to know what the city contributes uh, to the NAACP? I don't, but I'll have that for you before the end of the meeting. Okay, so I'll bring that up and I'll follow up to mm -hmm. that. And then I have another question later on. So that's it for now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Councilman Vieira. Uh, sir, and, and just for clarification, may we, or just general questions at this time, this is, general I, I, I would think, okay, thank you very much. And a lot, um, excuse me, a lot of good questions and whatnot, um, and, uh, and, and whatnot. A couple of quick issues here. Um, there was a reference there to Fire Station 24. Yes, sir. And I'm going to be making a motion for the administration to graciously meet with Local 754 to get some definition on what that's going to be uh, between first and second reading, if you would please. My vision that I've uh, said before for each budget, because I think we're really, and no fault of, of this administration, I want to be clear, or this city council, but we're running behind, I think, on some public safety issues. Um, when you take a look at our growth, I think we've grown uh, between 2010 to 2020 about 16 percent. We're about 400,000 or so folks in the city of Tampa, give or take. And um, that's why I uh, pushed for a couple of years ago the public safety master plan to look at mm -hmm. all of the city of Tampa across for police and fire, see where our needs are, and then talk about a fiscal bridge on, on how to get there for, for public safety, for police and fire. Um, luckily, we've been able to get ARPA money over the last few years, which has helped us a great deal. We just saw the opening of Tampa Fire Station 25, which in significant part was because of ARPA money. So that's wonderful. Um, but I'd like to know, um, and again, you don't have to answer it now because you may not know, as to Fire Station 24, what that's, what that's going to be. Is that going to be North Tampa? Is it going to be to address the challenges in K-Bar Ranch, et cetera? Another thing I'd like to see is, because again, my vision that I'd like to see is to have uh, construction money for a fire station each year combined with um, design money for the next year, mm. kind of like we did last year, which is we took a look at uh, North and New Tampa for 24, we funded 25, came about. It was much easier because it, it was a, a refurbished fire station, so we kind of, you know, were able to expedite that, and obviously given the crisis at 13, that came forward, but I'd really like to see that. From what I see, and again, I, I defer to our wonderful Chief Tripp, who does such a great job uh, on, on this issue, um, it, it would appear that Channel Side may very well be next on that, uh, on that list, uh, potentially for the, um, uh, des the design money, et cetera. So, I'll be making that motion whenever the appropriate time comes. Um, a couple of other key programs that I think were in the budget that, again, I just want to make sure for the sake of, 
uh, transparency of the public, et cetera. I talked to uh, Chief Bennett about this. Is this program, this uh, City of Tampa budget includes funds for a uh, victims of crime uh, program to assist victims of crime with gap funding. If somebody has a loved one who is a victim of homicide or if somebody is a victim of uh, sexual battery, et cetera, et cetera, um, this budget will fund at a certain level um, uh, gap funding, as our friend mm -hmm. Jay Johnson from Rise Up for Peace says, if your son or daughter is taken away from you, you still got to pay the rent, you still got to pay the, the car, the utilities, et cetera. And then this budget will also have test pilot money to get together with the county for a returning citizens apprenticeship program, something that we mm -hmm. work with County Commissioner Gwen Myers on um, and, and whatnot. So I know that's in there. We can get into specifics later, but later on I'll be making the motion, if I may, uh, with regards to my vision for uh, uh, fire as well as taking a look at uh, more specificity between first and second reading, just so that the public can know what that million dollars exactly is going to go to. Um, that's it at this time, I think. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much, Dennis. Thank, thank you, sir. Councilman Goods. Uh, Ms. Travis, I want to talk about housing. Yes, sir. The, the, the breakdown, I'm, I'm not clear on the breakdown when we talk about general fund because people keep saying how much money general fund, but then you look at this, this, this big pattern of these federal dollars. Mm -hmm. So I think people want to get a clear understanding of how it will be utilized in this budget because it's not really clear to them. That's where we're having people in the press talking about general fund money, more general fund money for housing. So I, if we can get an explanation on the actual general fund breakdown. Yes, sir. Because all dollars that you may have projected for housing won't help everybody, as I keep saying all the time. It, mm -hmm. it, it won't because everybody won't qualify for certain programs. And that's, that's what scares me about uh, our housing uh, overall. Understood. Uh, we added staff to that, correct? Not yes. And, and uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but just to clarify, we'll give you a breakdown of the anticipated expenses for the general funding, right, so you can see where it's going. I would appreciate okay. that. Uh, oh, Ms. Perhaps Ms. Travis may, may have it already. Here she comes. She's already know what I'm asking and looking for. Good evening, Council. So the breakdown for the $4 million that it is general fund for um, fiscal year 23 is $1 million for the owner-occupied rehab, $1 million for down payment assistance, $1 million for homeless, and $1 million for, what did I mean? Oh, our map. Sorry, that's the rental move-in assistance program. So this this current fiscal year, you allocated five million for our map. Any unused funds that were not expended in this fiscal year, we're going to roll over and add it to that one million dollar um, allocation for the rental and move-in assistance program. You know, and, and again, uh, folks, four million dollars is not a lot. I'm sorry. Four million is not a lot. No. Uh, it's not a lot, and uh, but also, but remember that's in addition to to the funds. So um, I'm going to put this. So the rental assistance, you see, I told you one million dollars for rental assistance from general fund, but you have rental assistance. We have a total of six point nine million dollars for rental assistance, home ownership. Um, which is also your down payment assistance, one million from general fund, in addition to federal funds that give us a total of three point three million dollars um, in that bucket. So these are the categories, um, except for the public services um, portion, that a million dollars for each one of those from general fund will be going into the, each one of those buckets. I'm I'm just fearful, you know. Um November will be approaching, and we know what that means when November will approach. Uh, a lot of people will be put out, uh, and that's what I'm scared of, to make sure we have a substantial amount of money that be able to help some of these people. And, and again, uh, I talked about we need to talk to some of these empty uh, folks who have empty beds mm -hmm. around this city. Yes, sir. Uh, it needs to be a conversation. Uh, you know, I know that we get the NIMBY theory all the time, but vacancies are up and people need to be in them. I know a lot of them are private, but we've got to find a way to see how we can utilize our dollars 
to get folks in the housing. Uh, and to yeah. your point, you made a point, um, I can't remember if it was the last council <coughs> meeting, where we talked about there are some property owners that are doing good, um, that are keeping their rents um, at a, a reasonable level, and there are others that are just um, continuously increasing the rents. And so one of the things that we talked about doing is doing a campaign pretty much celebrating those um, property owners and landlords that are that are being good stewards and understanding the crisis that we're in and, you know. We'll have another conversation offline before the second here. I, I don't want to belabor it because other people want to talk, uh, but I thank you for that. I want to get to the, the uh, East Tampa project, Mr. Rivera. How, how are we going to break that up? How, what's, what's the time frame? Because I get calls every day. People are excited in East Tampa about that, what I call the, the Epic Mega uh, Epic Center. Uh, how, how, how is that coming? How is that going to be phased out to, to get that project done and completed? I'm going to have to defer. I know how much we're going to. I know how much it's going to cost and how we're going to go out for debt service, but I'll defer to that time The public frames. can know how that's going to get built and when it's going to get built. To maybe... <laughs> Good evening, Council of CON, Administrative Neighborhood and Community Affairs. So we're in the process now with the that particular parcel. With um, we just onboarded the uh, consultant who would help us with the uh, building of the building or uh, getting all of the. Um, getting the building, everything intact so that we can actually build the building. Um, in looking at the approach, because of the, um, our, the magnitude of the project, it will be a, a two or three year project to have it completely done. So I don't know if that answers your question specifically. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking, because you're saying here, I'm looking at, we're saying a complex. So I'm looking at who's the who, who, who is an RFP been put out for the whole layer of the whole complex to know how those phases will be done. That's what the public wants to know. Are we starting to tear everything down so people can start to see development going on? So that's what I'm more interested in. How is it going to be implemented for the phases to get the part done and a completion time? Uh, Councilman Goos, if I may, I would like to come back with you with, you with the complete process of how that will um, be phased and what you can expect going forward since I don't have that information uh, in front that, of me. That's fair because the public wants to know that because yes, you know that they're, they're hungry and I don't want to say we're going to put this one little building here and wait a couple years to do it. No, I, I, I want to see the plan of if what we're tearing down, how it's going to be implemented. So the wow factor comes, not just throwing one building here and waiting and waiting. I don't want to see that. I want to see we, 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 we talk about bonds, we do bonds for everything else. I want to make sure we have the money to do the whole project to get it done. It makes more sense that way. Yes, sir. And then in addition to the uh, what you can expect, we will. I will also include the community outreach that we will have as part of that. So you will have a comprehensive, holistic view of everything when we come back before you. And again, community outreach. It, it don't take six months to do a community Thank outreach. I, I'm going to be honest with you. So I don't want to see a plan because we know the needs, what we want uh, in that community already. So I don't want to come. It's going to be telling me it's going to take them a year to do a community outreach. That's, that's not acceptable. It don't take that long to do a community outreach. I just want to make that clear on the record. Thank uh, you. you know, when I, when I hear about community outreach, I mean, we know who the major players are in those communities that we need to get to to be able to get things moving. I used to be want to wait in those six months to a year. Tomorrow we're still waiting on community outreach. That would be unacceptable to me. Point well taken, sir. Council I appreciate that. Okay. So, Ms. McGregor, you have something to say? Hi, good evening, Janelle McGregor, Director of Community Engagement. Just to kind of expand on the community engagement for the East Tampa Recreational Center at Fair Oaks. The outreach isn't gonna be six months, it's not gonna be 12 months, it's gonna be project for, throughout the whole duration of the project. Because this is a amazing time for us to be able to hear all of the voices at the table and to be able to take everyone's voice into consideration. So just to kind of level expectations on the community outreach part, it is gonna be very robust, very intensive, and very intentional. And it will be throughout the duration of that project. Thank okay, you. Okay, we have five communities over that, that I know that, that affect that particular part. 
So that's what I'm saying. It shouldn't take a long time dealing with Grand Park, Harlem Fines, even the north side of the street of the Woolen people, Woolen Terrace folks. You have the other, other side with your Ebor Heights and Ebor group because they also have a park with, the, with that borderline. So, and your southeast Simone Heights folks. So there's only about five or six we got to really reach to really know what we need to put in there. And I've already, I think I've already submitted the ideas that I really want to see that make sure that we have what other people have. All right? I think my last thing is talking about the, the uh, what I call the nonprofit funds. I, I get a lot of calls from folks talking about that fund. Uh, and I, I, I guess people are trying to say, what is the cap on the fund, Mr. Bennett? How, how is that, how, how are we really saying who's getting what money and how they're getting that money? Because you, you have a, a pool of money. Mm -hmm. you know, somebody wants $350,000, somebody wants seventy five. dollars NAACP says they get more money from the county. Uh, you know, the, the major programs and players versus some of the smaller groups. You know, and I really want to try to help this time around with this bucket of money. Some of those smaller groups who really want to do good work, but make sure that they're sustainable programs and they're, gonna, and they're doing the work, but giving them an opportunity. Yes, sir. So I want to make sure we, 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 we look at those very close this time versus those who've been getting it, but we haven't been getting a bang for a buck. Or we give money to somebody. I want to be clear. If we're giving somebody some substantial amount of money, they need to be a good partner with the city and help the city to do what we need to do. Not to just give money to say, okay, you have a program, you've been doing this for so many years. No, but to say, how can we be able to fuse what we do with what they do to help us deal with, with a lot of this production here? Some of these folks that are asking for money, they need to be good partners to be able to help us, you know, with broadcasting and do some things like that. I just firmly believe that. Don't mind giving money, but I, I believe that you have to be able to give back as well. So I just want to make, be, be clear on that uh, when we talk about some of these bond properties that are, that are asking for high dollars or some of the ones who don't get a chance to get dollars. Understood. Uh, would you like uh, an overview now? Yes. Would you like to talk about? Okay. Uh, this is uh, what we call our Social Action and Arts Fund. In the current year, fiscal year 22, there was a million dollars. As of right now, about 90% of that has been spent. In the last few years, when Mayor Castor came on, we started doing exactly, as you said, attaching return on investment requirements to this funding, both to those organizations that had received funding in the past and those organizations that want to receive funding. We have funded some new organizations. We have also seen that some organizations that want money, uh, for whatever reason, don't want to comply with the return on investment information. What are the metrics? What is the city going to get for this funding? Some have, some have not. So it was a million dollars in the current year. We've allocated or we've recommended council appropriate $1.3 million in fiscal year 23, so another $300,000 not only for those incumbent agencies, if you will, if they continue to explain what's in it for the city, but also new agencies that would like, as you said, to take advantage of this funding. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Councilman Miranda? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Hurtak. I forgot to do my list, sorry. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, I was so focused on pure. Um, Sidewalks. Uh, I see that we have uh, $4.1 million for street resurfacing, mm -hmm. um, and then there's several peppered in for different sidewalks. Mm -hmm. um, I want more money for sidewalks. Yes, ma'am. So, um, A, I want to know what the total money is for sidewalks and the number of miles you plan on adding and what we can do to get more of that. Oh, and I see Miss Duncan coming. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Jean Duncan, Infrastructure Mobility. Yes, currently uh, in this FY23 budget, we have, give me sorry for one moment, lots of items on our list here for mobility. Yes, and I saw several, I just, I yes. didn't, couldn't do the adding that quickly, but I, but my, my quick addition <laughs> is it's not close to 4.1 million, um, and I would love to get it, similar to the street resurfacing yes. I feel like adding sidewalks and resurfacing our streets are, are <coughs> equally important um, sidewalks if not more so uh, so we would love to add more as well <laughs> uh, currently in this particular budget as far as a line item goes we have about a half a million dollars for our maintenance program mm -hmm. where we're, a lot of that is grinding down to eliminate those deflections and tripping hazards and then we have 
only 650,000 for new construction. <clears throat> However, every single, I shouldn't say every single, majority of our roadway projects, whether they're complete streets or safety projects, whatever opportunity we have in any of those projects to include sidewalks as well, that is a top priority. So I don't have an exact mileage number for you, and maybe we can try to calculate that. We have many miles of sidewalks that'll be going in through those other projects, mm -hmm. but as far as line items, the numbers are not very impressive here, I have to agree with those line item numbers. Obviously, we're taking the monies we get from the in lieu fee, we're working with Abby Feely's team on that, and we're hopeful that, of course, the funding opportunity will come in November, I wish we can do a lot more um, but with local option gas tax really being our main methodology funding source is we're very limited on what we can do as far as line item opportunities and with the CIT coming to a sunset that's another opportunity that's going away so and I want to say thank you for that and if there is a way that you could just give a ballpark about what we think we're getting from other areas, because I think that's also valuable for yeah. citizens to see that we are, and, and I have seen in a lot of the projects we are, I did see the uh, Flora Brasca Complete Street, for example, which I know will include sidewalks, but it's just been a topic that so many people have asked me about, mm -hmm. and so I want to make sure to just get a ballpark. All right, we'll certainly do that. I'd really appreciate yep. that, thank you. Thank you. Carlson. Ms. Duncan, before you walk away, sorry. Jean, if I, if I remember correctly, um, 2019 when we started, the total budget of the city was about 900 million and the sidewalk budget was about 600,000 and now we're at 1.9 billion and it's 600,000. I understand we have enterprise budgets and other things, but is, is there not a, is, does the administration not prioritize sidewalks, or are we just? Is there just a hail mary to, to the to the all for transportation? I mean, get, considering the buzz I hear, that's not going to pass again, and so, um, or it'll get caught up in litigation. And so, if we keep waiting on it, we're never going to have sidewalks. Is there some other funding source or something else that we can do to try to make this a priority? We've said as city council that's a priority, but considering if the budget really hasn't changed when the when the total city budget's more than doubled. It doesn't seem like administration takes sidewalks as a priority. I would say we definitely take it seriously. Our, our traditional fund sources have been, of course, the gas tax, the in lieu fee. Uh, we can do some with multimodal fees. Uh, there's a, some nuances with that that, that we have to follow. Uh, those are from our developers who get those contributions. Obviously, we're constantly going after grants. Uh, so those have been our traditional fund sources. We generally do, and excuse me, CIT as well, historically, but we generally do not uh, fund uh, sidewalks with the general fund revenues. That's not to say that's not allowed or an option. That's just not been sort of the past history of funding support for sidewalks. If you want to add anything. Just, just one, one add on. If we, if we were able to move part of the $20 million a year in downtown and channel district CRAs, Let's say we could move five million. Could you use an extra five million a year in sidewalks? Um, well, we would have to move it to the general fund, and then and then the city would have to adopt that as a budget. But doesn't the doesn't the city have? You said you have a sidewalk plan, so if you had an extra five million a year, you could use it, right? I guess we could use it. I just get a caveat, and I've already turned out money. The first year or so, we it would take us a while to execute all those contracts <laughs> for that funding. Uh, so, but yes. I would just say in the scheme of the <coughs> needs, I don't know that we want to put five million just on sidewalks, not that they're not important, but another big complaint we have from the public is the street resurfacing, and that's woefully underfunded as well. So uh, we, wouldn't, we would never turn down additional money as long as it didn't negatively impact something else that the general fund money. So we could move 10 million of the 20 million mm -hmm. downtown challenger street. We could double the, 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 the um, road repair budget and we could multiply the sidewalk budget times 10 or nine. We're certainly willing to explore Thank that you. opportunity. Councilman Miranda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you mentioned two things, gas tax and CIT. Mm -hmm. Both will be negative. 
Mm -hmm. CIT, you got one more bite at it. That's the year 23, 24, 25, and 26. Then it ends, period. Yes, sir. Unless the taxpayers pay another tax for another additional half cent or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the gas tax, as you well know, trying to save the environment, which we all need to save, mm -hmm. and do something more with solar and other benefits to make uh, the earth a little cleaner than what it is now, is that your, your revenues and gas tax are also going to go down significantly when all these manufacturers of big companies that manufacture the automobiles get rolling. And now they're a little slow behind because of different things like the, uh, you know, things that come in from China that they don't have or whatever. Yes, sir. So I would imagine that that gas tax is going to decrease by 5 or 10 percent in the next five years. It is and a vulnerable continue. revenue source. Yes, sir. And uh, so I'm not trying to be a uh, bad news bear or anything, but reality is reality. You got one more bite at CIT and it's over. And it's going to be hard to pass another tax. The school tax failed. So what's going to happen to this one? That's all I got to say. Yes, sir. Anything else? Mr. Rara, thank you for your report. I'm just going to say a few things very yes, quickly. Sir. The majority of people I talk to, the basics, they want to feel safe in their home. They want to have fire and police. They want their solid waste taken away, liquid waste taken away. They want fresh, clean drinking water. They want good roads, well-lit roads. Only 19% of the roads in this city belong to the city of Tampa. We're custodians of county and state roads. I'm not going to tell you the millions of dollars that is owed to this city from county and state. Alluding to Louis Vieira, excuse me, Councilman Vieira's, we need more fire stations. We need one in North Tampa, then we need one downtown. We could build all the fire stations that we want, but if we don't have the staffing for those fire stations, in my opinion, we also need more police. Also, in my opinion, we need more code enforcement. And one of the biggest problems that we have had is staffings and inspections and permitting. But we could have all the inspections and permittings we want if we don't have the housing. Those are where I would like funds to go. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. Chairman, one person in please. please. Uh, you know, my chief trip, if you come to the podium since we're talking about, you know, public safety and fire, and you know, I've been a, I was first year advocate about the fire department, making sure we have the necessary needs. A uh, person who's been in public safety, uh, we have different areas in the city that we know that are growing, have big buildings. But I believe what, what I've seen in being a police officer for a long time, most of our calls are emergency calls medical calls. I've talked about looking at when these new buildings are going up, trying to find a partnership to where we can maybe get rescue car, cars in there because that's the bulk of our calls, uh, I believe. And I, I hear a lot about fire. I support fire uh, tremendously, and I know the needs they have. But I, I know we got to make sure that we have the money and making sure we also have the personnel to fill it. So I just wonder if you could just say how you look going forward, how you uh, how you going to manage that? Uh, reference a big fire station versus maybe a small uh, rescue car or, or some of the newer places that I've been have a combined small engine with a rescue in it, you know, uh, to save the city money and also give good quality service to the citizens. I think that's important. I hear the people mumbling and grumbling in the back, but we have to explain to people what we're talking about. So you're the perfect person to explain to the public in this council your vision, if you would. Good afternoon, Council, Barbara Tripp, um, Fire Chief for Tampa Fire and Rescue. Um, so to answer some of your questions, I have been looking throughout the city since I've been in this position for the last year of how we can um, accommodate the need of the community in responding to calls. Um, we do have some concerns, and when it comes to being fire stations, when we say fire stations, it's, it's not so much we need fire stations. 90,000 calls last year, 80,000 was medical calls. We need more transport units. And that was the whole purpose of opening up Station 25. So Station 25, we have two additional units. And since they have been in there in the last month, 
it has shows a decrease in calls to station 13, which mm -hmm. was one of the areas that we wanted to help Whoa. out. So once again, it's gonna take time and as far as me reviewing this data. Now the other concern which uh, council member uh, Vera has that's up in New Tampa, which is um, a K Bar Ranch. So of course I've been running some data on, um, I'm just say the box number. So I have, like you say, you have to explain to the community. So when we talk about box numbers, we, we have a, a distinguished area, destination, uh, where calls come in. So K Bar Ranch is known as 262-63. So I ran numbers for a whole year. Came up with 91 calls for a whole year. That averaged out to like five calls a month. So when we talk about vo call volume, the volume is not there, but the response time is there. So what I'm looking at now is to see how we can put, when I say a response unit, which would be an ALS unit that would be placed up in the area to decrease the response time. Now, do I need to put a $10 million fire station there now? To be honest with you, no, because it's not going to serve the purpose. But we do need to have some sort of response unit there. So I am working uh, with administration here to uh, put a unit up there, put a facility up there to decrease that time. And as time go, because North Tampa is growing, and we definitely need to uh, be prepared for the future. Are we going to need a fire station up there yeah, uh, soon? I mean, not soon, but in the future, yes, we will, because North Tampa is definitely growing. So when we talk about downtown Tampa, same thing. We are running calls. Now we know the city of Tampa downtown is congested. So what I'm looking to do is to add some additional units to the current station and then to continue with the partnership, which I have been in talk with um, SPP for to see what buildings are going up to see if they can assist us. Once again, we need transport units. So from, I when I say the 10% calls that we do run, that's include uh, could be false alarms, you know, traffic accident, fire calls, the combination of it. We're not neglected them, but I think we need to serve the community with the majority of what their need is, and that comes with the uh, transport units. So with that being said, one of my goal is to continue uh, with our data, because we had to make a lot of different um, adjustments when it comes to staffing, how we staff our units, how we staff our personnel. So as I'm making those adjustments, I'm beginning to see that I, uh, we have the infrastructure of some stations already that don't have a transport unit, you know. So I'm working with st uh, administration as well to try to get those transport units in those stations, which is going to help out with the call volume when it comes to medical calls. So I am working. Trust me. Well, thank you for that. You know, I wish 10 was a little bit bigger because, you know, 10 is one of the, like, the number two oldest station we have in the east side of town. He's camping a heart of it. With no, with no rescue car, that's why we put one over, I believe it's is it 16 to Station the, 16. Station 16, but I do have plans to help East Tampa out. I do have plans, you East know, Tampa. and that's with Station 10. And once again, a lot of it deals with the geographic area and how you design the units to respond, you know. So we have something in place that we're looking to try to span and get East Tampa 10 areas, but it's going to be with a different uh, transport unit. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I haven't even finished yet, but please go right ahead. I just want to say thank you. That was a great, uh, I've only really heard you speak once before on your plan and you were new. That was a fantastic summary of your strategy. And uh, I just want to compliment you on that. I look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Tripp, thank you very much. To my point, we can have all the units we want. We can have all the fire stations we want. But if we don't have the staffing to operate those sort of things. My point was the staffing is needed. And I'm hoping that we're more going to get more staffing through attrition, through a retirement. Are we keeping the same level? Are we expanding more? The city is growing. We need more staffing in fire. We need more staffing in police, inspections. We also need more staffing and permitting and code enforcement. If we're going to have our basic necessities meet the demands, we need more staffing. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Tripp. Can I just say one thing? Yes. So when you talk about staffing, we're in the current process. We just hired 15 new firefighters today. So we are in the process of uh, interviewing as well, and we will have another group that will be coming on. In 25 November. more. So that's my plan is to get our staffing level because right now we are down, and uh, um, administration gave us 57 positions. You know, so right now we're in the process of trying to fulfill those positions. 
Thank you, Chief Tripp. Anybody else? Mr. Chairman, I hope you were the thing I was trying to challenge you, so I was just No, making, I just, I I just needed clear to finish. I just, needed, I just <laughs> needed to finish my statement. Oh, I have no problem with this. I want to make sure we're clear on the same page because you I have think to we're point. on the same page. Oh, but oh. my point, my point was I understand. I've okay. had those conversations with Chief Chip oh, also. Okay. We can have all the buildings we want. We I'm can good. have all the cars we want. I'm good. But if we don't have the staffing to fill those things. I'm good. I'm the same thing. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Councilman Good. Uh, we are now. And but may I, Mr. Chair, make a quick motion that I referenced before? Would that be okay? I think I think we need to take public comment. Yes, you're comment. right. Before, yep, you're right. Well said. Thank you. At this time, we are now going to take public comment, speaking only to the fiscal year 2023 budget. Chairman, my name is Robert Pete Edwards. I've tried to nail this down to three and a half minutes. I hope I can get it under there. What I want to talk about is the parks and rec budget. Folks, I've been monitoring parks and recreations, and only Mr. Miranda probably have more knowledge of it than I do in this whole place today. Since they put Copeland Park, and then they had to work out something to get the original Riverfront Park. Throughout these whole years, and particularly the last 19 years, I've looked at the budget, the promises, the change of designs, the unequal in the funding, and all of that. We need to do a, a different approach. When the, the officer came up and showed about the capital improvements this year, once again, Rolette Park is left out. If you all remember, when Highland Pie, Highland, uh, uh, Al Lopez Park was transferred to, to uh, Highland, whatever that park was, uh, Al Lopez Park, we asked for additions at Rolette Park. It's a blue collar neighborhood, it's well diverse, but we can't get any help. When I look at the budget for the last 19 years, there have been false hopes, false promises, unequal spending, even on lipstick on a pig approach. And I'm talking about the whole Tampa area, whether you go up to Forest Hill, which is an old area, whether you go to Temple Crest, whether you go to Lincoln Garden. So we have to come to a conclusion that this amount up to six to eight million is not enough. Why is it not enough? Because they changed things so much, they could have gotten designs from other parks and all that make it different. I'm asking the council today because the people, white, black, and all, think the council is more into funding a ballpark, a new baseball team, than what we need with parks and rec. We got kids all over the place. We've never had a concrete, a complete work through with schools, private industry, anybody else to get all of the fields like Cuscadia, like North Tampa. Why can't they be diverse fields like the high schools are getting all over the place? I think what we really need to do to get the honesty back in that part, because it's been discombobulated for a long time. I mean a long time. We need to come up with a bonding issue because by the time the mayor is out of office in 2027, we would only, if you look at it and look at the previous projection, we will only complete 30% or what we need to complete. I have summarized in my mind, based on my notes and knowledge over the 30 years of, of doing this thing with them, that we need a $125 million bond initiative. But I'll conclude with this here. We can, we can put everything on a magazine cover to look good nationwide. We can do all of that. We can bring a team over here all we want. But if we don't get the parks and rec, we should be ashamed of ourselves for our people in, in the city of Tampa, going to the county, going to Pasco County, going to Pinellas County, because we got a bad parking system here. Please take care. I appreciate it, but we got to do something. And just tell the people, if you're not interested in the bond issue, cut it, to the, cut it dry right now and say, hey, we don't want to do it. But I'm telling you, it's an embarrassment when we got to leave the city because, and Charlie knows, he knows, Ray Park, Lincoln Garden, the whole bit. It's embarrassing. I just want to lay it out there. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. My name is Stephanie Pointer. Um, uh, I have a couple things that I want to talk about. Um, number one, I'm only a 
page 556 out of the 1,004 pages because I have spent half my life reading the city council agenda. Last week, we had $16.5 million requested in the first eight items, and it took me a long time to get through them. I really appreciate Councilwoman Hertak asking for that one pager so that we can look at those and decide whether we want to get a little deeper. Um, but um, I, I do have $5.5 million for y'all out of this budget because last week when we had the budget meeting two weeks ago, I asked Mr. Perry, why are we giving $5.5 million of ARPA money to solid waste? And he said to control our waste bill. Well, here's my question for you. They came to us last week, they came to city council last week and asked for $220 million for a new incineration plant. Hmm. You guys do the math. I think that 5.5 needs to come out of the, that fund and come back to housing. Sorry, that's how I feel. Um, I would like for you also to um, note, I want to talk, oh, that $400,000 that you asked about, Ms. Hertek, that was paid to a consultant, but they didn't like what the consultant told them, so the consultant's getting fired and they're going to ask for more money. Please do not let them put this pure crap off. Sidewalks. Ms. Feely told us last Thursday that there's a whole lot more builders building sidewalks, so that's a good thing. We're actually getting more sidewalks because you guys closed that loophole. Um, all neighborhoods, when they get a good neighbor notice, need to respond and make sure that the builders are building sidewalks. Ask for it to be in those plans. Um, and then uh, pipes project, let's take that pure money and put it in the pipes projects. We do not want to be like Jackson, Mississippi. Right. It's time to get on it. Um, and last but not least, let's talk about y'all's money. Can I get the Elmo on, please? It's there. It's up there? Okay, you see this penny? This penny right here represents our budget. If you cut this penny into 100 pieces, eight of those pieces would represent the new budget for city council. And I would offer, once again, everybody who's sitting out here in the crowd who works for the city makes three times what our city council does currently. You need a raise. I want people to be able to run for office who will not be beholden to the people who are donating to their campaigns. I want the folks who sit out here who are here on their own time and their own dime to be able to run and still pay their mortgage. So that budget increase for city council has nothing to do with y'all. It has to do with the future of our city. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good day for the second time today. Mentez not Tampa, Florida. We do need more police officers. We need one police officer for every white person in the city, <laughs> period. The people that run this city of Tampa aren't here. The people that run the city of Tampa aren't in government. The people that run the city of Tampa are somewhere in a corporate office watching their profit sheets and the investments they have in the city and how those investments can grow based on social stability. Capitalists run the city of Tampa. Private investors run the city of Tampa. No elected official runs the city of Tampa. No elected official controls the budget. The people that runs the city of Tampa can get funding for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, can get funding for a startup baseball team, tax breaks for certain private investors, 18% pay increase for the police department, but they won't put anything on the budget for rent stabilization, for rent subsidies, for social services, can't offer anything that positively affect poor and working class people. Nothing that positively affect 26% of the black population. And these clowns talk about parks and recreation and a little donation. One billion dollars and a little donation for NAACP and Juneteenth and stupidness. 555 million dollars out there for black people and they talk about ignorance. The city council people that sit here have very little to do with the city budget or city planning. They're just here as figureheads to maintain social stability and status quo. They're here to maintain order for imperialism and capitalism. All cities internationally and are an automatic. Cities run themselves. States run themselves. Countries run themselves. And when they can't run themselves with installed elected officials, capitalism replaces them with other puppets and talking heads. Poland is the perfect example. Ukraine is another good example. 
examples all throughout South America, Africa, Asia, and other places. In Poland, the imperialist bosses took the head of a trade union and made him the head of a country that was turning anti-socialist. Uh, in Ukraine, capitalism took a comedian and made him the talking head for imperialism. City, county, state, and national leaders are basic clowns that come packaged in a range of wrappings. This city council or the mayor of Tampa have nothing to do with this budget. $1 billion in black people to 26% of the population, we should be getting about $555 million out of the deal. $1 billion in people that are facing a housing crisis only get $5 million. Meanwhile, the police departments get 18% pay increase that they didn't even ask for. The people have to organize in a different manner. We have to organize under a socialist structure that will attend to the needs of poor and working class people. Anyone can be a beggar. Poor people have to stand up to capitalism and imperialism. The masses of people have to stop begging. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Keela McCaskill. I'm, I'm not sure if today is when you have to vote on this budget, but what I know is that technically you all control the budget, city council does. So I'm asking, I'm gonna start out saying, I'm asking that you don't adopt it. If you're honest, you hadn't read those 1,100 pages or 1,000 plus pages either, not as intended as you would if it was your money. So as a you know taxpayer, as a citizen, uh, as, as a constituent here, I just believe that the, the answer should be no. You raised some very important questions, some critical questions on that budget, and they weren't prepared to answer them. We've been through a lot as citizens. We've been through COVID, monkeypox, inflation, housing crisis. We had a mayor that, you know, oops, they way out of a HANA project, over $100 million. Then they came and attacked our most active city council members and hadn't apologized yet. They, um, you know, <laughs> so much has happened. Just went on an all-out witch hunt under, you know, Department of Justice investigation, all that. Can you see why we don't really trust the information that came before us as a budget? I don't trust those numbers because if you oops your way out of a $100 million HANA project, you'll oops your way into a budget to get what you want to fit who you want. I mean, on some projects, you, you know, the, 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 the crew's family benefit twice, the brother, the son, whoever. But I don't trust. We don't trust the administration. So I'm asking you to take some time to review that budget and make sure you're comfortable with the allocations, the way it's allocated, make them come back answer those specific questions you had, you know, for housing. I just don't see the urgency. We're in the middle of a crisis, but administration coming after city council. We need you to come after that housing crisis like you came after those city council members. Add in programs or whatever the need to help meet the needs of the people. I want to see more, um, more time go by. I want you to delay it. I want you to say no. Don't say yes to that budget. Make them come back. Get those questions answered. And spend the time to, to take a look at it and make sure we don't want pure. We, we, we'll look like Mississippi soon. Pipes is the major concern. We already have ample supply of water for many, many years to come. Data has proven that. We don't need pure. I'm not sure who's going to get paid or who's going to benefit from pure if you improve it or accept it, but we don't need that. So take that money, reallocate it, but really take some time. You all take the time. You control the wallet. You take some time and make sure that this budget represents you and what you would vote for. You've taken the time and budgeted as if it's your own dollars. Be very responsible with those dollars. So say no, and when you're comfortable, then let them come back and present a budget. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Connie Burton. Uh, you say trust and verify. Trust nothing here. Um, i like to make this point of history that in 1963, Dr. King said that the Negro lived on a, on a lonely island that was full of poverty in the midst of an ocean of prosperity. Mm -hmm. I could say 59 years from that speech, not the Negroes, but people that live within East Tampa, in the city of Tampa, find themselves living within a poverty community that has been identified as blighted with small movements. I think it's shameful that the only thing that has been offered on that budget is fair oaths. Fair oaths is something that, if this was your once in a lifetime budget, but for the last 10 or 15 years more, we've been talking about fair oaths moving in increments. When it was time always to pull the trigger for fair oats, it got bumped off. 
And what did we have? We had mercenaries for the city that would always come to the podium and tell us it was coming. Nothing, it's the same old script that it's being rehearsed again. Who's benefiting? So this city has a lot of money, a lot of projects, and we are hearing about apprenticeship programs and we are hoping that it does happen. But you have diversity minority uh, departments right now that can ensure that African people are employable. It's not happening. How do you hold up and allow a Hannah Street project to move forward and you just put a sheet of paper over it and say it's okay? No, we cannot trust and continue to verify. We are 26% of this population, and yet that budget do not reflect African people benefiting from it. The only time we tend to be a benefit from any of you all is when it's time for re-election. As it relates to housing, if you're running across the possibility of a recession, how can you count on federal dollars? It is shameful that all you has to offer our community is perhaps $5 million. And many of these down payment assistance program, working class people do not qualify. We need to have stabilization inside of our community. Everybody deserves to have a decent house. We're not talking about what they got on Bay Shore. Your creative and thought, modular, tiny home, container home, tin pan home, we need to have some sense of stability in our community that can provide dignity. We have too many families that's living in cars while you all don't have to suffer like that. Five million dollars is an insult. And we say, no, reject that budget, come back with a hundred million dollars for housing and then maybe we can start trusting and verifying. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Antonia McCutcheon, and I'm the newly appointed executive director of Tampa Bay Community Network. As many of you already know, we are a nonprofit community media center that has been servicing the Tampa Bay area since the mid 80s. We are a video production facility that trains individuals and nonprofits in everything video from television to the internet. I am speaking to you tonight to ask for your help. A couple of years ago, the city Council was able to get us back in the budget for $108,000 a year, and that has been tremendously helpful um, and very much appreciated as it helped us keep our head above water. However, the past few months have been quite challenging in more than one way, and we are finding that we are in desperate need of more funding. First, we had to move, and let me tell you that moving a television station slash media center is not only challenging, but very costly. Second, we left from a facility where we were paying no rent and no utilities to a new space where we now have to, where we, now we need to pay an additional $4,000 a month. Third, and on a more positive note, the need for our services has increased as the video production industry is growing exponentially fast in the Tampa Bay area and residents and organizations are seeking our training to help fill jobs. As you all may know, we have a new large commercial video production studio here in Tampa known as The View. They are one of only three LED volume video production studios, uh, I'm sorry, only three video production studios in the world and they are growing fast and have made a huge impact in the video industry in Tampa. And they are one of the biggest reasons why jobs are opening up. What does that mean for us? Well, the community needs us to help fill these positions and the best way to fill these positions are with our own citizens so they don't need to outsource. In other words, we are vital to the workforce community in Tampa because nowhere else can student residents go to get free training from a real television and video production facility that is already collaborating with The View and many other production facilities and is in the center of the fastest growing, of a fast growing tech hub in Tampa Bay. Furthermore, we have partnered with Career Source Tampa Bay where we refer our students to get the extra help that they need to develop their careers. We take our students from A to Z. We are it and we are needed. And why do we need more funding? We need more funding to be able to train more residents, hire more instructors, buy newer equipment to train them sufficiently, and we need more funding to offset the cost of having to pay rent and utilities, which we did not have to pay before. 
So we ask you to please help out your community media center, which will in turn bring prosperity to the community in a very measurable way. It's already happening. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dora Taylor and I'm Director of Operations for a Tampa Bay Community Network. I appreciate this opportunity to speak for our nonprofit. Here are some statistics that you might find of value. 53% of our student re students reside in the city of Tampa. 59% of our students are minorities. 42% of our students are women. 10% of our students are veterans. We have had 346 classes since January and had 426 student training so far this year and that number continues to grow. We would love for you to, we would love for you to consider raising our funding to accommodate our growing training program. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Santana, and I'm here on behalf of the Tampa Bay Community Network. Um, I would like to share my little story real quick with you guys, as I, I am one of the students of the school. I have five more classes uh, for my graduation, and I'm very happy. I'm here also as a citizen and as a business owner and Latina. I'm representing our community. If you guys can help this nonprofit that is helping a lot of people, please do it. Uh, I'm not here to talk about numbers because that is not my subject, but I'm here to talk to you guys about the necessity out there. I was once very poor. My grandmother lost her company in 2017, and I ended up leaving at Metropolitan Ministries with my son. No family, I'm sorry. Okay. No family in the city of Tampa, not knowing anybody, but thank God and you know, thanks to this nonprofit, I was living there for eight months and I was able to get back on track. Now I became a real estate agent and I'm also a business owner and I also come from a journalistic family so I found the local uh, TV station here in Tampa and they provide me with the classes. And now I'm able not only to run my own uh, TV production company, but now I need more people that I can hire so they can help me with this new project that I have for the city of Tampa because I am promoting um, a lot of tourists and I'm working with a lot of different uh, restaurants here in Tampa. And we need to, I need actually to hire people that can help me with the video production, with the cameras, that know how to do all of this. So if you guys can help them as much as you can, you guys will be making a difference, giving people the opportunity to go to school when they don't have, you know, idea what to do or any money to pay for it. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a beautiful night. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, Noah Myers, Tampa Bay Community Action Committee. Uh, I just want to start this off by saying and declaring that hi history belongs to the people. Uh, today, whether you know it or not, it's a historic moment. You can either choose to stand with the landlords and the developers of the city, the thugs in the mayor's office, and allow them to threaten people with homelessness. Allow them to extract every dollar from every working person in the city. Mr. Myers, are you speaking to the budget? I am speaking to the budget whether or not you should accept it or decline it or uh, increase housing, the housing budget. Uh, and the choice is, in obvious, you should be increasing the housing budget. $100 million sounds nice, but that's obviously not enough. We need rent stabilization. We need to be able to make sure that the landlords are not able to uh, effectively take people out of their homes and cause them the great grief of homelessness, the great blight of this country. I mean, we go other places around the world. Homelessness is not the same problem it is here. We allow landlords to, to leech off the people in the city, and we allow them to cause us harm. I don't like that, and I don't think anybody does. Uh, I, I have to say that we need to move to a future where these people are not causing mass harm. We need to move to a city that is better than what it is now. And you guys have the opportunity to stop that trajectory and to create a better community where people feel loved and secure in their houses. I mean, I don't understand who doesn't want to live in that world. Thank you.
Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Rodriguez, and I'm with the Tampa Bay Community Action Committee. Um, first off, I want to say this budget is a joke. Y'all have been joking all night. <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all, like you're joking. You're really joking, and like doing ha ha he he's in our face. Y'all have already funded racist housing programs. Y'all got in tr the city got in trouble for funding that BS crime free housing program, which targeted 90% black families. Mm. And ca that was carried out by the police. Who do you think was evicting people? The police telling the landlords, they're not on our side. We need actual non-racist funding for housing. Y'all have allowed biking law black to happen. Guess who funds that? Y'all. Y'all have allowed and funded driving law black. Guess what happens under all of these circumstances? Black people are murdered by the police with driving while black, we know that's gonna happen because in 2012 in my hometown, Jordan Davis was murdered for playing loud music during the day, a 17 year old. And y'all have allowed and passed that ordinance, which is BS. And y'all are gonna continue funding that. And I'm telling y'all, y'all need to listen to us and act, ACT act on what we say. Cause we pay y'all, okay? So y'all need to stop this racist nonsense. Y'all need to stop letting racist police on this task force get an 18% increase. That's not what we want. We want secure housing. We want safe housing. We want people like Dominic Mulkey to not be murdered because of food insecurity. Guess what causes food insecurity? Housing insecurity. We don't want people to be murdered at the hands of the police which has already happened in Tampa and will continue happening if you do not pass a budget that puts people's, pe the people first. People over profit, thank you. Thank you. Hey, oh, good afternoon. <clears throat> Say it back, please. All right, guess not, cool. Um, hi, my name is David Jones. I'm a member of uh, TVCAC. Uh, just talking a bit about the budget. Um, particularly the housing uh, part of it. Uh, at this meeting, y'all said that the housing budget just, uh, housing is getting uh, 5.5 million from the general funds. Um, <clears throat> and you know, we are seeing that that's not enough. We saw this earlier this year when y'all added, what, $4 million to the RMAP program, and then that program uh, had to go back on uh, pause after a week because of the uh, sheer volume of people applying for it, mm -hmm. um, which means that, you know, clearly that four point, uh, that $4 million isn't enough. Um, so uh, that's, you know, there's a clear problem there. Um, and there was talks earlier this meeting about uh, the money that the city's been saving every year, uh, that rainy day fund, I think is what you called it. Um, you know, uh, what last month y'all declared a housing state of emergency. Uh, since that emergency, there hasn't been any action to uh, improve said emergency. Um, after <laughs> just that next meeting, y'all, uh, five of y'all voted against uh, the rent control thing. Um, so it's like, uh, why call it an emergency and then not act on that emergency? Why call it an emergency and why not fix it? You know, uh, when I see a fire, I put it out. I don't sit there and uh, spray gas on it and piss in people's face afterwards. Um, so like, um, you know, whether it be from like the uh, general fund uh, pulling that money out of that rainy day fund, uh, because you know, the writing's on the wall, that bubble's gonna collapse and there's gonna uh, continue being more and more people put out on the streets. Um, you know, more money has to go into that housing project. Um, and you know, this was uh, seen more so just by uh, the way that the money was uh, split uh, from the funds in the general fund. Um, where we see, uh, I believe she said a million dollars going to uh, fixing the homeless, uh, homelessness issue, which, um, you know, if you walk outside right here downtown, right outside of city council, you can see it everywhere uh, until y'all move those people out of here uh, when the city has the uh, events, Super Bowls, uh, hockey games, all of the other nonsense. Yeah. Um, we're seeing that with the RMAP program, which a uh, million dollars is getting ate up like, like uh, just like that. Um, we're seeing that with these uh, programs with the uh, down payment assistance, where uh, the vast majority of folks cannot qualify for that, uh, primarily working class black and brown folks. Um, and we're also, uh, at the same time where we're seeing uh, housing being, getting an absurdly low funds, like y'all were talking about, uh, we're, cool, uh, we're, we're not seeing uh, the, 
yeah, excuse me. We're not seeing water filtration systems uh, being funded as well as they need to be. We're not seeing sidewalks in a lot of working class black and brown neighborhoods. Um, we're seeing potholes pop up all over the sides. Potholes are big as me, and that's a problem. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we're seeing $200 million go to the uh, police uh, with them getting an 18% raise this uh, last year. Um, you know, money always seems to pop up for uh, the cops, especially uh, when they're uh, especially when they're not doing what they need to be doing, and you know that's a problem. Um, like, truly, who uh, is to be served? Thank uh, you very much. Working sir. here, that's uh, a couple hundred thousand of us, or uh, you know, TPD across the street. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Amon. I'm also a member of the Tampa Bay Community Action Committee. I'll keep my comments short. Um, but I just want to say the housing crisis should be the council's number one concern. Uh, everyone I talk to who rents is being affected by this. I mean, literally everyone that I talk to who rents is seeing historic rent increases, right? Ridiculous increases in rent across the board. People are being threatened with eviction, which will upend their lives, their livelihoods. They'll be put out on the streets because they can't afford rent. Uh, landlords are price gouging residents. Slum lords are making off like bandits while poor and working people are struggling to stay in their homes. Now, why is this not a concern? Why are we only seeing $6 million to the budget for housing? It's because these people are working people. They're not rich. They're not powerful, right? You count on them when it comes to, to, to their votes, but as far as funding and everything, it, it's not a concern to you, right? Um, but again, I'll keep it short. Like Connie Burton and everyone else has said so far, the $6 million is simply not enough. And I think we need to see more money that's actually going to affordable housing to help people, uh, you know, maintain their uh, their livelihoods and not be put out on the streets. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Simon Rowe. I'm sure you know where uh, where I'm from. <laughs> what a surprise. Uh, also here to talk about funding for housing here in the city of Tampa. Uh, I was here for that one. Uh, presentation about a month ago in August. Uh, yes, I am very aware that overall, including federal funds, that there is currently $26 million for housing. But I think that misses the point that it does not help enough people here in the city of Tampa. If you look at that chart, uh, it can help an estimated 5,000 households total. The average household is about two and a half people. Even if you round that up to three, that's what we even assume that would help 15,000 people, which is generous. It might not even be able to. If we stretch that funding, that could only help not even 5% of the amount of people here in Tampa. But so many of us are rent burdened. I technically am rent burdened because I spend about 30% of my income on rent. And I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm very lucky to pay $400 a month. Even with my rent increase, it's not great here in the city of Tampa. More and more people are going to be affected by this and we're just not seeing anything. I'm sick of coming to these meetings uh, for almost a year, seeing so many people affected by this uh, be ignored, proposed solutions like a tenant advocacy office that was voted down. I'm sick of seeing suggestions for more money and being laughed at. I'm sick of seeing I'm still thinking about like in February when like a homeless teenager came up and like was saying I want to be treated like a person and I forget who it was said we do see you as a person but where is the action you can't just say words and not like put the action behind it mm -hmm. like people are struggling the struggle is going to continue this year even without the even if we don't get a recession it's just going to get worse and it's frustrating. I get why people don't come to these city council meetings. Mm -hmm. It's scary to go into a room full of like city people and police and you know talk about like you know the problems of poverty. It's scary. I'm basically paying like twenty dollars a month for parking just to hear about people's lives being ruined mm. month after month. Mm. I'm I just really want to see something done. So yeah, five point five million extra. Not enough. Something needs to be done. 26 million, not enough. I don't know why we're still patting ourselves on the back for doing the bare minimum here. All right. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor Cook. I am also here to talk about the housing budget. It seems pretty unpopular to me. Hopefully, y'all are taking that into consideration. 
Um, I wanted to talk about kind of a couple things. One, with the housing budget, like everyone else has said, five million is kind of a slap in the face um, when everybody's rent is going up. When I see more and more people homeless every day, I give money to a new person every single day <laughs> on the corner because yeah. they can't afford to live. Yeah. What, are, what are we giving 200 million more to the police for are we giving it to allow them to police people and stop black people on their bikes like they did in the past? Are we giving it so they can stop them for playing their music too loud? Or maybe we're giving it um, so they can hit and run 15-year-old uh, kids like an HCSO officer did a few years ago to Josiah Pinner. Or what about Dominique Mulkey, like mentioned earlier? I don't think we need more money for the police what about us? What about the people that make the city run? The people that go to work every day, that work at Starbucks, that work at UPS, that work at all the places that you go out to eat and you don't tip. What about those people? <laughs> you know, we make the city run. We pay your bills, by the way. And last I heard, there's an election coming up too. So if everybody's coming up here saying, I can't pay my rent, we need more money for housing, I see more people homeless every day, why are we saying five million is enough? I don't know. You tell me. Thank you. Hello, Joseph Nahava, TBCAC. Um, well, we at TBCAC have proposed a people's budget that, um, you know, we, we submitted to you all. I uh, haven't heard back yet. Uh, but it allocates more money for housing than the current city budget does total with, you know, state and federal funds included. Uh, that's ridiculous. And between the pitiful amount for things like uh, water and sidewalks and mobility and housing, um, we can only conclude that this budget that the city's uh, submitted is an anti-people's budget. Uh, as stated before, $200 million for cops is an insult, right? Um, when TPD has been found, uh, when TPD has been guilty of so many crimes like the murder of Dominique Mulkey, like the murder of Jonas Joseph, shot at 125 times, mm. that's deranged. All right, uh, federal investigations. I don't know where you all come from, but where I'm from, those kinds of things don't warrant a raise, right? Those things warrant punishment. Um, and a campaign to beg landlords not to raise their rents, I, I mean, come on, where, where do you get these ideas from? I, I really want to know. I can't fathom it. Uh, but, you know, it really should be no surprise. That's the result of your refusal to pass uh, any kind of rent control. So really, we, we can't be shocked. Uh, and, and to be clear, you know, the additional money for housing is a stopgap, right? It's not really the solution. Because ultimately, all it is is, is a subsidy for landlords, which they can apparently <coughs> refuse, right? And that helps uh, nobody. So ultimately, the solution is uh, rent control, social housing, public housing, right? Um, so you know, if, if for no other reason, uh, than your own self-interest, right? Do something. Do more than what you have talked about doing tonight. Um, I guess if you value your, your positions. Uh, thank you. Thank you. If I see no one else standing, Miss Lockett will be the last public comment. Good evening, Council. Um, this will be short and sweet. I got a lot of personal things going on, and I, but I felt the need to come and uh, talk to you guys about the budget. I think $5 million is not enough for housing, as everyone else said, so it's, it's an agreement on that. Um, I think that um, more money should be because the uh, The prices are going up. The money will stop. The rent will remain high and, and be the same. And those individuals that can't pay their rent now won't be able to pay it then. There will be a lot of evictions. If you understand the numbers around, as Mr. Carlson uh, indicated, a recession is uh, coming. We have to prepare for that. There's an abundance of money that's out there that y'all are dishing out. So let's not be careless with it. 
Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Goose. Ms. Lockett, I hope everything is going on. I know you've got some things going on. My blessings to you and your family. All right? Thanks a lot. At this time, is there any council members or staff that would like to take a break? We will have a 10 minute break.
muted.
Let's go. The City Council session is back in order. Back from our break. Roll call vote. Carlson? Here. Vieira? Yeah, Manis here. Maniscalco? Here. Pertet? Here. Good? Here. Miranda? Here. And Citro? I am here. Thank you very much. Mr. Rohara, we have finished with public comment. What is next? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I believe the Chief of Staff would like to say a few words. Chief? Thank you, John Bennett, Chief of Staff. If um, I can be supported by Ms. Travis and Mr. Ruggiero, I um, want to put something from listening to public comment on the floor for Council's consideration as we move from this hearing to the next hearing. It's just a suggestion, and um, we are in a housing crisis. Um, this has come up before, just tonight. Um, so it's a lot of contemplation. I've talked to Mr. Rojero about it. I've talked to Mr. Ruggiero about it. I've talked to Ms. Travis and Ms. Feely about it. And listening to public comment, and especially the feedback from Ms. Pointer, is that we know that there's $5.5 .5 million in ARPA sitting in solid waste. We know that we have to do a rate study anyway. So the suggestion would be, if the rate study can include an efficiency scenario of absorbing that 5.5, and by the mid-year review, which we do typically right after March, if the monies that have been allocated for housing in the broad scope can be freed up from the efficiencies in the rate study, the question I pose to Ms. Travis and Mr. Ruggiero, to Mr. Ruggiero and Mr. Washington is, do you think you can include in the rate study a methodology that would absorb the, that money that's earmarked to recover the rates without a rate increase by doing a business efficiency process within the rate study? And if so, we could put a pin in that saying that anything that can be recovered from that rate study would go to housing by the midterm of the fiscal year. So that's kind of what is being put out. Both Mr. Ruggiero, Ms. Travis, Ms. Feely thought that that was viable. I also talked to Mr. Rojero. So again, just putting a concept out there in the first hearing. Councilman Maniscalco. I think that's a great idea. And I will add that we haven't even discussed the CRA budget. And that's where more money will come in. Do you have an estimated number or you want to wait till Thursday to? It is in the millions, correct? That's correct. So you have $10.2 million of new ad valorem revenue um, to be allocated. And so on Thursday, when I make the budget presentation um, in front of council, I'm asking you to, we have not met with all the CACs. And I think it's a disservice to the, your volunteer board to just arbitrarily just assign money to um, a program that they haven't had a chance to discuss. Um, Mr. Elise Drumgo is not here this evening because there were three CRA meetings this evening and he went to all three to discuss um, your request of affordable housing programs. That 30% motion um, that was made, I think it was in 2020 or 2021, um, set that intent and to reprogram that money. So I'm asking you to adopt the budget as presented by the CAC um, on September 20th. And in November, I will come back to you once we've closed out uh, the current fiscal year with the allocations as you've requested to go towards um, funding. Right now, there's only $2.2 million that's allocated um, in three of the CRA, three of the eight CRA districts. So we have the opportunity to 
uh, add another 10 million, up to 10 up, million, yeah. and up to 5.5 million, or as you've already explained, what can be recovered from that? And this is something that you're proposing now. So there's a potential of 15 million dollars. Could be 10, could be 12, could be nine, could be. Yes. But within that scope, on top of what we've discussed. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Carlson. Uh, Mr. Bennett, um, I made that motion, CRA board, which is also city council, three years ago or so, decided to put 30% of the CRA money in affordable housing. I've had s people that sit on the CACs call me this week and say this is the first time they've ever heard of it. And uh, 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 Nicole's staff person has been going around to these meetings, but the, the staff although the CRA is a separate board, we outsource um, the staff to the city and the staff that the city assigned us never told anybody about it apparently and also never allocated the money and never spent it. Um, and so why, can you explain why that didn't happen? If we had spent eight or $10 million a year starting three years ago, we would have a different situation right now with affordable housing. Yeah, Councilman Carlson, I, I can't speak to the history of the CRA budget as it was presented and adopted for over those three years, I'm sure that um, as part of the CRA budget going forward, we could look at a historical uh, analysis of how much was put either into housing or preventing homelessness or land acquisition or anything else. But I think the time for those is when that CRA budget is proposed is to make the argument that we want this we did, amount of money. and then money. staff didn't do anything. I'll switch to another one, Hannah Avenue, that came out of general fund budget, right? It's not an enterprise. That's a question that I, I, I'm sure there's allocations throughout the whole project. Yes, yeah, so debt, debt issuance. Yeah, but it's paid out of general fund, right? Unless, yes, sir. General yeah. fund, yeah. And so yeah. it was 108 million mm -hmm. plus 71 million interest. And I don't, you guys never told me how much O&M, I guessed 40 million. So it's probably over 30 years, 220 million plus for a building. And I said, why can't we just rent from Floorland Mall or something like that and use the rest for affordable housing or some other purpose. Mm -hmm. And and you all, I asked you all to do a rent study, rent comparison study, and you all didn't do it. You, we never, you, the public and the city council never heard how much it would have been to rent instead of to pay for this really expensive building. When the building across the street, Tampa City Center, it's a lot bigger, sold for about the same amount during the time that you all were planning this, this building on Hannah Avenue that, by the way, didn't go out for bid. Um, this, uh, um, despite the legal department helping with, uh, with justification for it. But my question is, um, that's general fund money. We, $220 million over 30 years, we could have spent that on affordable housing. But it, it, the, the point that I'm making, uh, Mr. Bennett, is that administration doesn't put affordable housing as a, as, a, as, as a priority. What you're talking about is jumping through a lot of hoops, looking at rates and things like that. But um, really, well, a few minutes ago, we we're talking about CRA money that'll be two or two and a half times what the, what the administration's putting in. And what you wanna do is look at crumbs when, when we've been hearing mm -hmm. for more than three years that affordable housing is a problem. The last administration, by the way, so everybody knows, the Buckhorn administration, I'll say the name, tore down 2,000 affordable homes with no plans to replace them <clears throat> at a time that we needed 50,000 homes. And then we've been trying to replace them and nobody in the administration's doing anything about them. The mayor's not listening to the budgets that we're requesting, that you heard the public tonight, they wouldn't even spend, the staff that you all assigned wouldn't spend the money of the CRA budget that we allocated. And now, um, uh, and then you spend $220 million plus on a building that's way too expensive and then justified and fought us. And you're, by the way, you define um, uh, um, resiliency very broadly, but your resiliency officer, which is a great idea to hire somebody, has spent most of his time in the last six months working on toilet to tap. <laughs> and I mean, what, uh, I won't say the initials, but the public is saying, all people in the public are saying, you know, for resiliency, we're worried about flooding in South Tampa, but if defining it the way you all do, we're also worried about people being homeless. And our resiliency officer is trying to justify a, up to $6 billion project that nobody in the public wants. And now you guys sent us an email today, we're gonna delay it again until February, because guess what, the election is in March. And so you want to delay it until after that. What, when is the administration going to take affordable housing as a priority? We've been asking, we've been making motions over and over again, and nobody in the mayor's office is doing anything about it. You're asking us to sit back and wait till some calculation is made until we can do something? When, it, when are you all going to step up and do something? Can I respond, sir? 
first, I recall the council asked us not to rent anymore. That was one of the things that was asked of us a long time ago. Again, I'm not the handle project expert, but it's my understanding that we're rolling up a lot of other facilities that we're renting that are gonna phase out to give a community project. And again, I'll let Mr. Ruggiero and of course the community engagement team talk more about that if necessary, but we do have an ROI slide on HANA. And of course, we're, we're trying to meet those demands well before the inflation hit us, as well as the housing crisis. I don't look at five and a half million dollar opportunity as crumbs. It's a, it was an option to give council an idea to put a pin in that money amount until the rate study was done. And I asked the solid waste staff if they could incorporate an efficiency, which is really should be what we're doing all the time, which we have brought back to council to look at efficiency and effectiveness in our business models and see if we can put a pin in that five and a half million dollars for housing should the rate study come out on the positive side of that journey. So I think we're trying to meet on the right track. Once again, on the CRA budget, you know, let's move forward with the new budget and see where we need to go and make sure that we combine the monies that are, that La are possible. Last question, for the, the mayor has uh, political advisors who can work on political solutions and policy analysis. The mayor has communication department that can work on rallying the public and uh, to bring money and resources to solve these problems. The mayor has uh, a legal department that can work on lots of solutions. And instead of working on affordable housing, the, the administration spent the last eight months to a year attacking city council members. And now we've got uh, uh, proof of it that, that uh, the mayor's staff uh, text and communicated with each other about how to conspire to attack city council. How, why, why is that a good use of, of taxpayer dollars? It's probably not ethical, by the way, but why is it a good use of taxpayer dollars to attack city council and spend all that brain power attacking city council instead of working on issues like, like affordable housing and homelessness? So <clears throat> from the administration, we disagree that there's any attack on city council, number one. Number two, we feel like we've collaboratively worked. You remember the press worked. conference that, Can I finish that, my statement, that, that Mayor Castor had to attack several? Councilman Carlson, can you please let him finish? You, you asked ask me a question, question. To <clears throat> I'd like to respond. For the last three years, council, we have worked collaboratively to move this city forward. Everything is not gonna be agreed on at all times. My door and my phone has been on 24 hours a day, seven days a week to look at anything that's been asked of me and make sure that it's moving in the right direction. And I think everybody would agree with that. So it's the same thing going forward. We are not gonna fund anything that doesn't work coll collaboratively and collegially with council moving forward. And again, if there's anything new, my phone is on, my door is open, and I'm happy to look at anything that doesn't make sense going forward in the budget. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman Miranda. Let, let, me, let me say this. Years back, I'm one who helped start the clinics in Tampa, but I voted against my own suggestion at the end. Why? Because they were renting two buildings at $7,500 each or $15,000 a month times 12 months is what? $180,000, correct? Times 20 years, which has been 20 years, is $3.6 million. That's what I'm saying. You'll never get that back. I, I'm not debating anybody. I'm just saying that's what I did. The problem is they never even Council answered the question. Councilman Carlson, you're recognized. Thank you. They never even answered the question. We asked the, I asked the question, what's it, how much is the rent? Um, my, my point to the to the chief of staff and everyone is let's use the city resources instead of attacking city council. We've got written proof of it, by the way. We've got press conferences that were held. It's not that it didn't happen. Let's spend city resources. Let's start a new era that the mayor needs to call an end to the attacks, tell her staff to stop her, that she's going to fire them. And she needs to apologize to the public and city council. And then we need to move forward getting staff focused on solving these problems. St staff should not be sitting around texting each other about how to attack city council members. It's ridiculous. Look at what the public says. We've got these real problems out there. And for some reason, it's okay that city staff have misused city resources and city time to attack us. The last thing I'm gonna say, Chairman and Council, is that we came up here five minutes ago to offer an option for $5.5 million to support housing moving forward. And I appreciate all the comments. I really respect the public for coming in at all ages and all demographics of sharing. That's why staff is sitting here to listen in real time to the challenges that we're all facing. And I'm gonna keep bringing and supporting options for solutions forward with this team. And that's exactly what we did, tried to do five minutes ago. And we, I will continue that process, Councilman Carlson. Councilman Gooch, and then we're going to go to Ms. Travis. 
I'm just trying to get the math right on this, Chief. We've got the 5.5 million. You're saying you'll allocate the 5.5 now, or you're saying you're going to do your study and see what's left to, out of that 5.5? I'm going to make sure I got it right. Yeah, great question, Councilman Goods. What we're suggesting with the team, again, the housing, solid waste, the CFO, and myself, is that continue with the recommended budget with the 5.5 million in ARPA in the solid waste because it was a direct enterprise offset to make sure that rates didn't increase. Since then, there's been new information that's been brought to council about the business unit at the waste energy, and we do agree with the efficiency and effectiveness of the business process and going forward. And so what I proposed a few minutes ago, which seemed to be embraced well, is that during the rate study, over the next six months, if we get to the midpoint, anything we can free up in the rate study that doesn't increase rates to the community, which is a concern to keep you under roof and keep your utility costs down, we will then allocate or reallocate towards housing. And so it's dependent on that study, but the team is very confident that they can put the efficiency and effectiveness into that rate study to recover that money to use for housing. So it's, it's a chance we're taking. That's, that's the way I hear it. It's a chance Sir? we're taking. It's a chance we're yes. taking, basically. That's what I'm hearing. It's a chance. I think we're. It's it's a theoretical risk, but I think it's a good one, and everybody else agrees. <laughs> well, I I I. I I hear Mr. Carlson, I'm not gonna get on the, the tax stuff. I've, I've already said my piece last week on that. Uh, so I'm not gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop on the, the real issue for me. Uh, and everyone knows I, I speak truth to power and the issue we have right now is housing. That should be our primary concern. Uh, we, you know, we have to pay our employees well to keep good people, but we have to look at areas that we can cut the fat to deal with the housing situation. Uh, I'm just gonna put it out there. This body refuses to look at rent stabilization uh, as, as one means that probably would help. It's not, it wouldn't have hurt the economy. I don't care what nobody says. One year of trying to look at a 5% would not have hurt no economy, period. I don't care what no, I've talked to other people, that, that ain't gonna hurt no one. But we were, we were, we were, we were le reluctant to do it. That's why the public's angry. But I, I, will, I would challenge any of staff here to go by Walmart tonight, go by the Walmarts and see how many families are in the Walmart parking lots. Go by Walmart and see how many wall are at the Wawa or Walmart in those parking lots. And see those, you'll see, y'all know what I'm talking about, because I've, I've seen that before where they go in the morning, overnight, and they go into the McDonald's, sneak into the McDonald's, like they actually buy a cup of coffee, and they bathe all the children in the McDonald's bathroom. Get ready for school. Then hopefully they'll get there in time to get breakfast in the morning. I, 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 I pulled them over, pulled up to those cars, and put the light in there. What, what you doing? I understand. I'm not going to give a hard time. Do what you got to do. Get those kids to school. So for me, the focal point is where can we find money for housing? I know it's a, you know, a, 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 a challenge, but we've got to find a little bit more money for housing. And Mr. Miranda said it best. We, we may have to start getting into the housing industry. In the budget, the general fund, it may need to be a spot just for housing for the future going forth, Mr. Rear. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to make a motion about this, how we can do that with legal, because I think you've got police, you got fire, you got you get public service, you got recreation, parks and rec. There, there needs to be a spot in there, that pie now for housing going forward. That's a critical challenge we have. I'm just going to be honest with you. You know, and, 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 and again, looking at the scale of how our city is growing, we're a bigger place now. We're not a small place. Things are rising, costs are increasing, but housing has have to be a part of the pie now. Because I don't care what anybody says, employees have gotten a little bit of, a little bit of money, but I guarantee you some will still be affected in November. Our own employees, our own employees. So I'm just telling staff right now, you're going to have to take a hard look. We're talking about a, 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 a if, when, a how with this 5.5 million. Uh, you, you have, it's a suggestion. But the public is not looking for a suggestion. They're looking to say that got done to add on uh, to the pie to help people. So I, I'm just, I'll listen to everybody else, but I just, I think you got to look at where we can pull from one of these other projects or whatever that, that's a low hanging project that you can add a couple of more to, to this housing situation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilwoman Hertak. Um, I have a question for Ms. <clears throat> um, Travis. Uh, 
We had a conversation about this earlier, I believe last week, um, the days just run together, um, about how much is left over in the RMAP fund. Right now, uh, I last year we put $5 million, million into the fund, but I believe that we said there's still about three and a half million left. That's correct. Okay. Councilman Hartack, um, based on the number of applications that we've moved through based on the award, because we pay the landlord directly on a monthly basis, um, we've expended $1.2 million, and so we have $3.8 million there about okay. with our, that will be rolled over into okay. the next fiscal year. Okay, so <clears throat> just, I brought my laptop, so I had a calculator. Okay, okay let me get mine, hold on. <laughs> But so, so what I did is I just looked at the general fund, which is approximately $550 million. So this total housing fund that initially came on this worksheet mm -hmm. uh, was 4.8% of that $550 million, um, which we all agree is just not enough. So that's why you came forward with the CRA plan, which right now you said is about 3.3 possible million that we could, that is, that that's program. So on your agenda, yeah, that's program. Yeah. So right now, the <laughs> CACs have allocated about two point two million dollars, and on Thursday, um, there's another million dollars mm -hmm. um, that will be added to that uh, allocation mm -hmm. yes. for housing. And then, so the three and a half million left over, plus the three and a half, three point three from the CRA, plus the five point five possible from solid waste. Uh, oh, I don't have the total, but either way. Um, we went from 4.8 to before the solid waste uh, incre increase would be 6.4, and now we're at a total of 7% of that budget. And I want to challenge staff to make that 10%. I, I, I don't care where we get it from. Um, and, and this is why. When I go to the water and I find that 1.1 million, I know it's allocated, but could we take it, could we allocate it towards something else in water so that we can free up water money that could possibly come back to the general fund? What else can we do? Uh, folks are saying they don't want pure. That's totally fine. We can come back to pure, just like we say we're coming back to this solid waste money um, if, if they don't need it, uh, if, we, if we need to pull it out another time. But we have got to find, uh, yeah, 50, 55 million. We need to find 55 million somehow. I mean, I understand this is also homeless services and home ownership and acquisition and rehab because I agree with Councilman Goods that we need to create a, apps, uh, a solid fund for housing. It needs to be one of our line items um, because even if this crisis is gone or when this crisis <laughs> abates to some degree, it's the rent's still not going to go down. I mean. And right now we're just paying landlords. And I totally understand that's a stopgap measure. And that's what we have to do right now. Mm -hmm. Totally understand not asking us to, to you know, move the mountain right now. But we have to see the mountain moving. We have to see the ability to move that mountain in the future. And whether that means putting more money toward, I mean, I, I don't know, government funded housing again. Like what, what do we do? How do we allow our citizens to live here safely? Uh, in indignity, because your story about the Walmart just reminded me of when I was a Title I elementary school teacher, and we had showers in our schools. We had um, we had uh, washing machines because our kids would come to school, and they would we would keep an extra set of clothes. It was just it's so hard. It's heartbreaking. And we're all helping where we can, but this is what we can do. We need to find this extra money. And I really appreciate Chief Bennett finding this 5.5 million from solid waste. I'm sorry, Ms. Pointer, finding it. And uh, Chief Bennett agreeing that this is a great way to, to add more money. Um, if we could just find $5.5 .5 million more from somewhere else, we're at 10%, which I think is, I, I understand that the, the general budget isn't we can't spend all of that money. A lot of that's earmarked for separate, for different things, especially our salaries and, and benefits and all of that stuff for our fabulous staff. But, but everyone is asking for this. We, we have to come up with more money for housing. We just have to. Thank you. Good evening again, Council. Um, Councilwoman Hartack, I, 
I believe that we will meet that 10% once we do the allocations with the CRA budget. Um, right now, the $3.2 million is just based on what the CACs allocated. West Tampa had their CAC meeting since the um, budget workshop, and they, out, they proactively allocated an extra million dollars that's on your agenda this Thursday. Um, Elise is texting me real time from Drew Park's meeting. They voted on the 30, to do their workshop of the 30% of their budget for allocation. Um, and he just went to downtown, talk to them, and he's off to East Tampa to talk to them about it as well. So I do it. believe, I'm sorry? He yes, he is. Um, and so I, I believe that we will hit that 10% once we've made the adjustments with our CRA allocations. I just, if I may make a couple points. Um, Councilman Carlson, Carlson, you talked about the motion that you made um, in October of 2020, and I actually um, worked with Morris and got the exact motion so that I understood the intent. Um, I asked, also asked Michelle Van Loan to provide me any presentation or correspondence that she's communicated to the CRA board, and she provided me a presentation that was made to the CRA board and action was not taken. So I'm just going to push back a little bit on um, you as a CRA board, the executive director or the director of the CRA board is your employee. If your employee is not performing, you need to do a performance evaluation and hold that employee accountable. So I'm just going to push back and tell you that if, I, if you're not, an employee is not performing and have not done what you've asked them to do, the onus is on you as a CRA board to do that. Your direction was very clear to me. I have a lease going out, talking to the CRA meetings. We have communicated that. There's no question. When I read the, met, the, the motion, there was no gray area. It was very clear. And so we intend to hold that true and bring you back a, an a, amended budget in November that meets that 30 percent or tries to meet that 30 percent um, goal that was established in 2020 and also try to have whatever programs um, that some CRAs, the other thing is like, we're trying not to recreate the wheel, we're trying to work smarter and not harder, right? And so some CRAs, um, East Tampa has some excellent CRA programs that could be re replicated in other districts. And so we're working hard on doing that and creating efficiencies. And then my last um, point to uh, council, um, excuse me, Councilman Bennett, I'm um, sorry. Chief, <laughs> um, to the chief of staff, um, recommendation on the 5.5. The $26.4 million plus the new CRA money, um, we have full-time position as a part of this uh, fiscal year 23 budget. We, excuse me, when we make the recommendations for adjustments in November, we're going to make recommendations on staffing as well so that we can administer that money and get the money out. I. I can tell you that today, even if you found another $10.5 million, we're not going to be able to put out that kind of money before your mid-year review um, when the CFO comes back to you mid-year. So you taking that opportunity to do the rate study, see what efficiencies, I, I won't be able to staff up that quickly and have the money out that quickly. Um, so I think that that's a very methodical approach and that allows us to staff up for the money that is allocated up until this point. Thank you. Councilman Carlson. Um, you, you talked about the presentation that was made to us and yeah. uh, if you go back and look at multiple meetings, we reminded staff, and I won't go back and, and revisit history, but we reminded staff multiple times to do something. The good news is that for us and the public is that you're here and your team is here, and you've only been on a short amount of time, and uh, you're do making a lot of progress in a short period of time. So I thank you for that, and I know you're in earnest trying to solve these problems. Um, the one thing I would ask is that uh, CRA is a separate organization, yes. and maybe by budget we're required to put it in, but that shouldn't count toward the city's 10% or whatever. Um, it's a, it is a, a separate item, and um, um, it's easy to, uh, maybe pull CRA money, it's harder to use the city money and find other solutions. Mm -hmm. And the city's doing a better job than three years ago when it wasn't a priority, but mm -hmm. um, but we have so much catching up to do, we need to spend more time on affordable housing and less time, or no time on Pure, and less time uh, you know, with, the, with the dirty politics that I talked about a few minutes ago. So I'm hopeful that, that more people will take the attitude that you have and that we'll get this um, solved more quickly. Thank you. Councilman Goose. 
See, the reason, Ms. Travis, people respect you is because you're not afraid to tell your bosses what's right and what's wrong. So I can appreciate if I'm somebody's boss, they can tell me, no, that, that doesn't work, not to make something work, but that doesn't work. That's why the community is respecting you so much because you're telling them the truth of what they really want to hear. When they, it's not right, you just tell them. You don't give them, you, you speak truth to power, you don't play games. And that's why you're being so respected so much in this community right now because you're keeping your word. You're not playing the politics game, you're keeping your word, and people can respect you for that. I respect you for that. You told me you, you say you're going to do something, you do it, you don't give fluff. You know, you say, well, I'm going to meet with the mayor or Mr. Bennett, and I'm just going to tell them the honest truth about this and that, and you come back and you give it to us, we move. And that's all the citizens in this council can ask for. Not to play politics, just do what needs to be done. You know, you come in with your people, hit the ground running, we got things moving in these CRAs before, and I'm not criticizing the people before, because they, they again, to me, they, to me, when, you, when things don't move like, that, move like that, they're afraid of their boss. Okay, nobody says this. They're afraid of their boss. Or they have an agenda to where they want to make sure that another part of society is moving because they feel that might, might be better to move, but you, you're working a balanced approach on it all. I can appreciate that. So I don't want to just say, let's just say, lump this 10% in council in, uh, in CRA money. If that's CRA money, that's 5% we get, fine. How much the city can get to get to that 10% to equal out or get close to a total of a 10% budget? I think that's the key right now. How can we get there? How can we get to the goal line? I, I think that's what we need to look at. Where on this side can we get close to get matched with the CRA to get us to the goal line? It ain't going to be perfect. It ain't going to be a bunch of money. It may be only be a three-point play. And people are looking for seven. But I think since you're here now, and Mr. Hero, and I saw Chief Bennett shake his head, I think going forward, I know Mr. Morris or, or Mr. Um, Massey, Mr. Massey was back or whatever, but looking at how we're going to be, if that could be put into a motion or whatever, how that can be done, but I think the housing portion of the pie has to be incorporated. But again, we appreciate your working and being up front to what you can do, not what you can't. Chief Bennett, you wanted to add just something a, right now? Just a little closing remark to everything that's been said for the last few minutes. We are grateful for Ms. Travis and her team. Um, you know, we think we're moving in the right direction. We think that all of the energy needs to go to the things that we've talked about tonight. But the one thing that I can tell you after the last 20 years that I've seen in local government in this city is that we continue to adopt new levels of service that we have never been asked to do before. Mm -hmm. And to Councilman Good's point of view, Councilman Miranda's point of view, and generally all of your point of view, is as we move into these new levels of service, the public needs to understand that this is the way our city needs to operate, whether it's public safety, housing, parks and rec. So whatever the experience and expectation gap is that we want to close, we have to work together. 20 years ago, we got hit with about four storms in one year. And we realized that we needed to create a new level of service for emergency management. Before that, because I've been here since 1984, we just relied on what the county told us to do for emergency management. We completely transformed our emergency management level of service in 2003 and 2004. And of course, part of that was post 9-11. The same thing with roads. Not all roads are city roads, right? So now we're looking to change levels of service for our community that drive on all of our types of roads. Whatever the infrastructure issue is or the housing issue, we are changing the level of service based on the demand and the crisis that we're in. And I just hope that we can grow together and get it done in the, in the manner that we're talking about. And I have all the faith in the world between Ms. Travis's office and all the other departments that have made certain efficiency sacrifices to feed that emergency are going to continue to work on that process with council support. So just a philosophical journey from what I've seen over the last 20 years, how the city has been asked to increase levels of service, whether it's in the social sector, the public safety sector, any other sector that has come to our attention. And this one is the most present right now. So thank you.
Well stated. Councilwoman Hertak. Um, I have a question for Ms. Duncan. Um, because as I look for where to find money, uh, I, I dove into the pure thing and found a few more in the capital improvement project uh, realm, and I know that we probably can't move money, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, the sustainable water supply, that is, um, that had 11.3 mil and has only used 8.6. What exactly? It says project provides for alternative water supplies to drought proofing existing supplies and provide sustainable water source for decades to come. Um, evaluation study design and construction. <coughs> what have we done on that and can we take any of that money? Yeah, I'm going to ask Brad to weigh in a little bit on those on that particular item on uh, I'm not sure if we can answer this, the funding side in this moment, but um, if we can't, we'll certainly circle back on that. I'm just looking for anything that has a possible connection to the pure project that citizens have told us unequivocally they don't want. Um, Brad Baird, Deputy Administrator of Infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about uh, the, the monies that were earmarked in previous years and it, there's eight million spent out of 11, if I can get that right. Yes. Um, so that was for um, all the work, all the planning work and um, also some source control work. Um, if you remember previous briefings on that mm -hmm. and uh, the work on the alternative study plus um, the National uh, Research Water Institute uh, work that was done. So all of those things, um, source control, just to remind everybody, was um, to go back into the wastewater system and determine where the high strength waste was coming from so you could get it at the source. Um, so um, that money I would have to defer to Mr. Rogerio if it's, if it's still available. Um, but we, we did not spend all of that money, you are correct. And so I guess the, what I'm doing is when I'm when I'm digging through this, I'm finding like that's 2.7 million, and in the water sustainability program, we have 320,000. And it's not that I mean there are other things too where they've we've allocated money, we've spent some money, and then there's no allocation, there's no budget for the next five years. So what do we do with all that money that's just sitting there, and and how do we access that? Yes, ma'am. And I'll use the uh, Pure Project as an example. I've got more information since you surfaced that. It was 2.2 million-ish mm -hmm. in previously appropriated and council approved funding. As you saw from the capital improvement sheet, 400,000 or so has been spent. We have $1.1 million that's been encumbered or obligated to outside, I believe outside vendors. So what that leaves a balance of that can be used for other water-related projects is 700,000. You get 2.2, less the 400,000 actual, less the 1.1 that's been obligated, leaves you about 700,000. So that's what's happening over time with these projects. No new funding is being planned for those five years forthcoming, but the funding that has been approved is sitting, waiting for either further expenses of that project or in this example, a decision by council to discontinue funding for that project. Then maybe in the future it would be nice if you had another column that's, that said, you know, encumbered or something like that. So that when, I, when we look at this and say, oh, gosh, there's some money here, if, we, if mm -hmm. I knew that it was, was focused on something else, I, I, I wouldn't ask as much. But no, I've, uh, made a, I've made a note of that already. It's a good idea. Thank I, you. I appreciate it. Um, because the other thing then, if we can reallocate, I think all of us would. Um, but we are, um, well, I don't, well, I'm, I'm the daughter and the granddaughter of an accountant, but I am not an accountant myself. So I, I, don't, I don't know where to look in a thousand page budget to find these. So this is where we come to you and mm -hmm. say, if there's some extra room, if, we're, if we're, we have this money, why can't we do anything in our power to, again, to move it to wherever it needs to be in mm -hmm. that department and then shift money out that's possible. I, uh, it it just seems like we have a bunch of money sitting 
you know, it's it's just like at home when you have ten dollars in one jacket mm -hmm. pocket and five dollars in uh, under the couch. I mean, really, right? Yeah, we all true. have those times where we want to find that cash, and so you run around your house and you try to find where you've squirreled it away. Um, and if I'm sorry, so and, that's and, that's that's, <laughs> that's gonna. I would like you to overturn the couch cushions. Uh, un understood. And can I can I expand on that just just yeah. a little bit? And. And again, as you move through the capital improvement program year by year by year, eventually the projects will be closed out. Mm -hmm. And if there's funding available, we give city council an opportunity to reappropriate it. The, one of the reasons we don't come to council and say, uh, if the project isn't closed out yet, one of the reasons we don't come to council and say you have extra money here is because the presumption is council approved the project and they will want to see that project completed. If that's not the case, then again, bring it to our attention and we can and we can see what's obligated, for instance, and isn't actually spent. It's a great idea putting in what's been what we call encumbered, so you have a better a better idea of what is the balance. But again, absent absent council action, we presume previously approved projects, council wants to complete. That's fair. But even if we have even if we do want to finish a project sometimes by some sort of uh, extra um, wonderfulness, we don't use all that money. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, absolutely. it's nice to have that come back. Yes, ma'am. And again, that's, that's one of the reasons we update the five-year plan every single year to give council an opportunity to, plans change, priorities change. Mm -hmm. and, that, and this is council's opportunity to decide, for instance, whether they still want that project completed. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Carlson. Uh, mentioning that, um, Hannah Avenue project, uh, we were we asked a lot of tough questions. We didn't get enough answers, and we were hesitant to approve it. We did, and then two weeks later, we found out from the public that it didn't hit MBE guidelines, and it also, uh, I think, did not hit the apprenticeship program guidelines, and it wasn't put out for bid other than a CCNA exception the legal department found from 2015. Um, and so then we tried to withdraw it. Uh, but initially, it was based on the data we had at the time. We didn't have full information. We approved it, and then the legal department said, "You can't, uh, you can't withdraw it because not only are we going to get sued, but you'll personally be liable. And we're not going to protect you." And so, um, the uh, the question is, it originally it was two buildings for 100 million. Then it became one building for 108 million. So if it turns out that it's 100 million, there's 8 million left over. What happens with that money? Will will the presumption be that city council approved it, so we can just spend that money on whatever we want, what, what will be the presumption on it? It will depend on what the scope of the project is and when it is decided that that project is complete. Again, there's debt service and debt issuance wrapped up in that. So if there's money left over, for instance, we'll have to see how that corresponds to the debt issuance that we've made and whether, and of course I wouldn't know this, whether it has met the definition of that project being complete. But could the, could the administration spend that on on making the building even nicer than it is already because there's eight million left over, or would the administration come back to us and say, do you think this is the highest and best use for the eight million, or should we spend it on affordable housing or something? Else? I would defer to contract administration, but my educated opinion is anything outside the scope of what council has approved would have to come to city council again. Um, the, the other thing is at the beginning of this meeting, one of the first questions I asked you was, uh, is there anything in this budget for pure? And if I remember correctly, the answer was no, and then it turns out there are some things in there, so um, I, they're I'm under sorry. different, but go ahead. I recall it a bit differently. What I recall saying is there was one pure project that remained from previous council approval with, as I've discussed with Councilwoman okay. Hertek, a balance. And now you've heard, of course, 1.1 million of that has been obligated. I wonder. I don't know if you know the answer to this, or maybe Brad or Jean could weigh in. Do you know in the last three years how much we've spent on Pure or, or TAP before it? I mean, is, she talked about $11 million, but have we? Based on that uh, capital improvement project in the book, it says 400000 So if there's a Pure-related project outside of that, I don't know off the top of my head, perhaps someone else does, but that particular project, 400000 and change, has been spent. But, but I think several million dollars has been spent in the last three years, no? Mm -hmm. and, and one thing is when, when you all first came to us with it, it was 350 million, and then when I proposed taking it out of the budget, 
you all said, well, just take 300 out. So there, to me, there was also 50 million slush funds there. And just to, just to get the votes, I, I made the motion anyway for 300 instead of 350. But anyway. Okay. Um, Brad Bear, Deputy Administrator of Infrastructure. Um, just for clarification, and maybe I didn't hear the question correctly, but um, the two point, or almost 2.2 million that was uh, earmarked in previous uh, budget years um, for Pure was actually a placeholder for the 30% design. How, the question but, was how but, much has been spent on Pure in the, just the last three, three and a half years, do you know? Um, total, I would have to, I would have to get that. I don't know that off the top of my head, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I know I'm putting it on the spot there. It, do you think it's like five, 10 million, 20 million, 50 million, any ballpark? No, 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 it's, um, it's, le it's well less than 10 million for the work that I talked about earlier. And the last thing, um, two, two other quick things. Um, the water department briefed us on maybe <laughs> three or four water buildings. One of them I think is six million for, that includes like room for five people plus a water museum. Um, my recommendation to them was go rent space and, and, and use the rest of the money on something else. But um, uh, the, the question is, if, um, if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Rayero said that the, uh, the, the Hannah mm -hmm. Avenue project is being used with, um, or being paid with uh, general fund money. Mm -hmm. um, why didn't we put water department people in there? I know that people that have to work on site have to work on site, but I think it's only like a five, 10 minute drive from the water treatment facility. <laughs> why, why wouldn't we have put uh, water department people in Hannah <laughs> Avenue um, and then, then we could have used um, uh, enterprise fund money to offset the general fund money. I mean, if general fund money is the most scarce, then why wouldn't we have put some enterprise offices in there so we can offset some of that money? I don't know the answer to that question. I have to defer. Gene Duncan, Infrastructure and Mobility. Uh, yes, the Hannah building was uh, scoped and identified for all of those rental spaces that we have scattered throughout the city, some of which are coming up with uh, lease uh, ex expirations or other, other situations, such as folks getting kicked out of 11th Street due to the Department of Transportation's project. <coughs> the Water Department team has been planned in our capital budget for a couple years now as a line item identifier uh, with the goal of having that team stay on the premises of the plant. We've seen extreme beneficial uh, efficiencies of having our wastewater team that used to be on the sixth floor of the TMOB move and be on the plant premises. So the goal and the interest was to have the water staff that is currently in rented space or other modular units uh, be on the, the site with the plant uh, because we get a lot better efficiency, communication, and those type of things. So the Hannah building was not planned to have the water engineers and technicians in that structure. Thank you. Any other further comments or questions? There we go. Scouts Magoos. It's getting late. Need to bring it to a close. Uh, Obviously, there, there are ways that we can find some extra dollars. So I, I would suggest that uh, Mr. Hero get with the uh, water folks, wit, and see how we can take a few dollars from those projects. They can be closed out now, reopened later on, but right now we have a housing crisis. Uh, I don't want to eat up other areas, especially you can talk about public safety and other areas. We just can't do that, but uh, some of these projects, like the water can hold, I think can, some of these projects can hold off. We need to look at where we can pull a few more dollars to get us there. Uh, I don't know what the answer is tonight or what the consensus of the board, but I think you need to look at all your projects on that side of the aisle, see if we can take those dollars, if we can close out some things and bring it back to this board before the 20th um, so the public can feel at ease that we're doing something. Uh, it's their money too. They have a right to scream and yell at us. I tell people I don't care about being reelected. That, that's never bothered me because I can put my ball cap on Mr. Rand, my whistle. I can go coach kids, the attacks. All I don't care about none of that. It wasn't I, on your ball then. Yeah, hey, they'll know. They'll know. They'll see this sweat coming down the sides. So I, I care nothing about that, that reelection. I care nothing about the political side. I just care about doing what's right for the people. People say they're suffering. It's my job to make sure they ease some of their pain from suffering. So I would ask that you look at <laughs> those areas with the water folks and Brad and then come back to us and see where the, the, how that dollar amount moves 
on the administration side, and then we know we got the CRA side coming, so we can balance them out. If I could interrupt briefly, one of the issues in reviewing that those items, Councilman, is those are enterprise funds, and so legally we are restricted to a large degree how we can use those funds. Right, and, right. I, and, and I, I understand and I, and I get the general sentiment of council may be that, that uh, the administration will look at the budget at ways that they can provide additional funding for housing. I, I get the general drift. I think that's where we're headed tonight. But there may be limitations on those types of programs because of the source of the money and it being enterprise funds. So I, just I, I do understand that. But, but again, we, we're looking at all aspects just to try to get us at least three points. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Mr. Massey. Uh, Chair, if I can expand just, uh, just sure. a little bit on that. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, of course, Mr. Massey is quite correct. We have both legal and debt covenant restrictions associated with using an enterprise fund for non-enterprise uh, non fund. However, you know, we do, we being the general fund, does get funding in a more roundabout way from the enterprise funds via the cost allocation plan. You may have heard me speak of that before. That's the enterprise agency's burden for those services provided by city government uh, well, for revenue and finance, for example, <laughs> technology and innovation, human resources. And we, uh, we contract with the Maximus, I think it is, a third-party, nationally renowned third-party vendor. And it's quite an extensive study to defend what we can get from those enterprise funds because we don't, in my checkered past, before I came to the city of Tampa, I might have uh, pushed the envelope a little too much, for instance in taking enterprise funding for the general fund. So there are very strict guidelines we have to follow. So we do get some uh, uh, reimbursement, if you will, from the enterprise funds. Further to that, Hanna Avenue, for instance, will start, uh, we anticipate in fiscal year 24, giving some cost allocation funding to the general fund from, uh, from fund sources such as the Construction Services Center, for instance. Not in fiscal year 23, but as it comes online, we will absorb them into the cost allocation plan. But uh, further to your point, Mr. Hughes, I do appreciate a financial challenge. So we, uh, we will go back and look uh, if, through every, uh, every avenue. Councilwoman Carl, uh, excuse me, her attack. <laughs> um, so you were just talking about a report that, that searches and, and finds these the, the money that, that is allocated to the general fund from these enterprise funds? From these, yes. Can I get a, can we get a copy of that report Certainly. just to read it? Mm -hmm. Just to, I mean, I'll see it's what I can do about reading it. Fascinating. But, yeah. Well. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I appreciate Absolutely. it. And I appreciate your, your interest. And I any, will, I'll provide Any you other type of uh, report that, that does detail that would be, would be really interesting. Anything mm -hmm. that details the, the money that's being spent, that's being sent around, any way that we can find. I'm I, I'm happy to read. Yes, ma'am. And of course, again, uh, kind of. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll presume you're going to send seven copies. Yes, sir. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Yes, we will. We will send a copy <laughs> to each. And and you know, further to a Councilman Carlson's point, that is the, that is how sensitive the general fund is. We want to get every, literally every cent that the general fund is entitled to, and that's one of the mechanisms we use. Thank you very much. And, I, and it's something that <clears throat> Chief Bennett said that I think is really true, which is that the, the city is expanding its footprint, whatever you want to call it, uh, reimagining its role. And, and it's something I think that, that uh, challenges a lot of people. Uh, I remember on this council, I, uh, a, a lot of the, the new members, Councilman Dingfelder, who, who are obviously not with us right now, uh, Councilman Carlson, Councilman Goodsell, a lot of the people on the council were talking very aggressively about housing. And, um, and, and pushing that, and I, and I think it's, it, it's, it's a, obviously a good thing. Um, you know, I've always come from the perspective that we shouldn't um, defer so liberally to the county on, on, on some of these social welfare issues. You know, the county has a great indigent health care uh, uh, program. I'd love for the city to have something like that. Call me a big government, whatever you want to call it, a bleeding heart. I, I, I'd love to see something like that, I think, down the line. But, but certainly this is something that's very proper. Um, I did want to make a motion 
if I may, with regards to the fire issue, for Tampa City Council to request uh, that the administration uh, meet with uh, Tampa Firefighters Local 754 uh, to determine the use of the million dollars that were budgeted for District 7, uh, coupled with looking at, again, let's, let's take a look at this. I, I think it's important to uh, fund potentially a new fire station every year plus design. So look at design for the next fire station um, and, and we got a couple weeks to do that, and um, and that's it. And, and my office can can work on that. We have a motion made by Councilman Vieira, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Maniscalco. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Pertet. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Goods. Yes. Vieira. Yes. And Citro. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, sir. Nothing else. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Councilman Maniscalco. First, I just want to, you know, thank Councilmember Goods and her attack for your <coughs> strength and your leadership. I agree with everything you said on the housing. Um, very impressive. And, and your comments, I think, are very well appreciated because you're fighting for what's right. And, and I'm happy to support you always because, again, I agree with everything you said. Um, secondly, I did ask you, Mr. O'Hara, earlier about the NAACP. I know we do fund nonprofits. Yes, sir. And whatnot. NAACP receives about eight thousand from seven thousand two hundred, sir. I'd like to see that increase, and the reason is, and I really don't have to explain it, but the impact that the NAACP does have on this community, who benefits, how they uh, communicate and reach out to the community, what they do, uh, from the national level, and of course here on the local level in the city of Tampa. We fund other nonprofits, other TV uh, institutions, the other networks that were mentioned earlier mm -hmm. at a hundred plus thousand dollars. Would we be able to allocate a hundred thousand, not what we're at now, which is you know below that eight thousand dollar mark to the NAACP? It, the answer uh, is it depends. For instance, with this new system, we would ask for an itemization of the funding. They provide, let me back up, they provide uh, a justification, if you will, of, of what the city gets for that 7200 Exactly. If anything above that, we would ask them for additional justification. What will the city get for our return on investment, whether it's 10000 20 30 et cetera? So if I were to make a motion, let's say at $100,000, I'm just mm -hmm. putting that number out there. They, for example, have mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. They have scholarship programs. They have... They can come back and say, this is where the money went. It's not that they're going to uh, salary increases and a fancy new car for the executive. and a fa None of that. It's going directly to help the youth, the community, whoever is in need, whatever they wish to do with that money that benefits somebody in whatever the capacity is. And I know, again, mentorship programs helping uh, you know, guide youth to that are high school students, uh, anything. I mean, there's, there's a wide variety. But... <laughs> you know, if, if I were to make a motion for, let's say, $100,000, you know, cap it at that, allocate that, but require them, per the system that you talked about, that they come back and say, this is what you're getting for this 90 something plus thousand dollar increase. This is where we put the money towards. Here are the receipts. Mm -hmm. You know, here are the invoices, whatever it is. Chief Bennett. I just want to make a comment, John Bennett, Chief of Staff. Um, as Mr. O'Hara and I have actually Council Magood said it well, tried to add more accountability and more opportunity within the nonprofit system. This very simple process, if you will, it's called the logic model. You basically say these are the resources you have, these are the outputs that you deliver, these are the outcomes you hope to get, and then you report on a quarterly basis and you get your funds in a quarterly manner. And then what happens is Mr. Rojero's office, much like grant accountability, goes through those quarterly deliverables and make sure they align with providing opportunity to the city within a strategic plan, strategic realm. When the NAACP had asked for an increase to funding a year ago, I had asked Ms. Wynn to send out Brent McKenzie, our workforce development director, to meet with the NAACP on site and work through their workforce model, which is a lot of the things you just spoke to, and then bring back it a supportive recommendation. I use that story because quite often when we get a nonprofit request, we will ask one of our subject matter <coughs> experts to go out 
and work with that nonprofit and find out how to right size the program. The second thing that's going to happen this year, working with Mr. Rojero's office, is that when these requests come in, again, it's it's a unique pie within a pie of the entire budget. So when a when a uh, immediate outlet is asking for 100,000, that's getting close to 10% of that entire pot. So we look at things in these sub-programming areas. Are they going to salaries? Are they going to programming? Are they going to workforce development for our youth and et cetera? And all those things. So what we plan to do is that as these come in, we want to bring them back to council and say, here's the percentage of this pie that this group is asking for. Here is the way that they've asked to program it and then council can make recommendations around that. So what we're asking council is to send the nonprofits to the process and then we will come back and bring it to council on the back end of that due diligence. So to earmark a dollar amount, we don't have any idea how many requests we're gonna get. In addition, we've had some new ones come in from our offline conversations uh, in, the, in the nonprofit community. So, and then there's also the ones that have been somewhat dependent over time on these and we have to have those discussions. So I think, not to put words in Mr. O'Hara mouth, that's why it depends. To, to put a dollar amount is a bit of a challenge until we go through that process. But we want to make council part of that process on the backside. Councilman Goods. Mr. O'Hara, what's the total budget for that, that fund? It's $1 million in the current year and we have increased that 300,000 to $1.3 million in fiscal year 23. All right, I want to talk about the, uh, the, the TV network Mm -hmm. uh, they do a lot of good work. I know a lot of folks have gone through, I know a couple of my folks have gone through that program, and I mean, they can do TV production. I mean, it's a valued program, uh, a, a valued program. Um, and they're asking for a lot of money, and I, I don't think we could obtain it with just one, uh, with a million. We've got so many folks that are asking for, for dollars. I don't know what the county gives them, if the county gives them any money. I would imagine the county does give them any money. Would you know what the county gives them? I do not. Uh, so I'd find know, out. I don't know if Temple Terrace or Plant City gives them anything because it's a community net for, for all Hillsborough County, I would assume. Uh, but uh, I know they do, do a lot of good work with like the NAACP. So if we can look at some kind of increase for those two, I would be supportive of both to kind of get an increase with them. I know we can't get to that 300 for them, but uh, I always say something is better than nothing. Uh, to work with, you know, Understood. at least keep the lights on. So if we can look at NAACP, uh, again, I don't know if we can match the 100 because I know that a lot of folks at the bottom are trying to be a part of the process now and want to give everybody an opportunity to get a piece of the pie. I mean, I can get all of it, but at least get a piece of the pie. And those ones who have been doing longer standing work, of course, we got to keep them moving. But uh, I know a lot of small programs, you know, this is what I hate, I'm going to be honest with you, which I never allowed any of my programs. What they call a highway holdup, where they get out there, and ball clubs get there with hats and helmets. I hate that. To me, it brings on begging. I used to hate that. I, I wouldn't allow any of my programs to do any of that. Uh, and we, I would make them try to find another avenue of applying for grants, talking to corporations, talking to small mm -hmm. businesses to get their money versus the dangers of getting out there, getting hit by cars. Because you're going to have a lot of these small programs that may come now and ask because they know it's a program. And I want to see them, some of those folks get an opportunity. Understood. Understood. Uh, so if you look at those two people, uh, NAACP and the uh, So you, do network. you need a motion on, on this or? Uh, Councilman Council's, Council's discretion. Uh, I just make a comment real fast if you don't, don't mind. Um, to my colleagues, um, you know, I showed a copy of the charter the other day. This is our budget. Right. The mayor's office presents it and if you read the charter, several of us are on the Charter Review Commission, if you read the charter literally, um, we should be a lot more involved in this budget than we are. Um, but it's our budget. We can go in, we can add whatever we want. Uh, the only thing is it's either, either we're gonna, if there's a finite amount of money, we can either reduce something else or we can ask the administration to do it. And so I don't think we should go begging to the administration to put something in. They put all their goodies and pet projects and $220 million office buildings in here. Instead, <coughs> we should tell them what we want. and. I, I think for both of those that a hundred thousand dollars is too little and they shouldn't be they should they should be held accountable for sure but you look at the accountability that's held towards some of these organizations it's it's crazy the EDC which I've argued about two or three times they they have a whole list of output that's measured there's no outcomes at all what they're doing is they're taking our five hundred thousand or five hundred fifty thousand 
and they're using that to let an insider group that pays $30,000 each to, to attract companies that are already coming, and what they do is they offer them subsidies. So they're offering back office jobs or, or jobs that are coming here anyway, subsidies from the county and city and, and state uh, to, to subsidize these jobs. Instead, what we need to be doing is working on our numbers. It's, it's really offensive in the, in the summary of the budget. It talks about how Tampa's economic numbers are great. They're not. And it's not all of them have done well. These numbers are cherry picked. When the middle class most of the last 10 years is shrinking and the number of people in poverty is increasing and there are all kinds of problems, um, we, need to, we need to be honest and address those issues because we can make the numbers move up on them. But the only way we're going to do it is by addressing the housing issue. And the first step is helping people find a place to live or stay. The next thing is helping them buy a home. But then the other thing is we, instead of workforce development, which is talked about in this, in this budget also, we need to go beyond that and talk about um, helping people uh, build their own businesses. Um, uh, there are a lot of uh, people who want to be entrepreneurs in East Tampa. And, uh, and the EDC is not helping them start businesses. Uh, workforce program is not helping to start a business. Workforce program is necessary, but it's only uh, helping people get, get new jobs or get, get slightly better jobs. There are really smart people that could start their own businesses, and that builds intergenerational wealth uh, in places like East Tampa. We need to stop thinking about East Tampa as a place to subsidize and a place that's rich in culture and history and that has smart people that want to be successful. And what the NAACP has is not just a workforce program, but they have a program that helps entrepreneurs. They help people start their own businesses and build their own businesses and make their own businesses successful. And that's really what we need to do. And we need to put metrics around it. But let's, if, if I had a choice, I would just cut 150,000 out of the EDC budget and give it to that because it's gonna be a lot more effective for our, in moving the numbers of our community um, instead of looking at the, cherry picking the numbers that we think look good and ignoring the numbers that are bad. Uh, you know, we've talked about the disparity rate uh, between men and women in, in St. Pete is $3,000 a year and Tampa's $9,000 a year. The disparity between blacks and whites in St. Pete is $15,000 a year and Tampa's $21,000. Uh, average home ownership rate statewide is 65%, St. Pete is 58%, Tampa's 48 and African Americans like 38. It's crazy how bad our numbers are. And as the former dean of the College of Business at USF said, we, our strategy can't be to say thank God for Miami that Miami's last. We need to be, we need to strive to be first. And we, the only way we do it is to br bring everybody up. And, and spending 550000 to subsidize big businesses is not working. It hasn't worked. It's not working. And there's a lot of other programs that aren't working, uh, building $220 million buildings. There's money out there to spend on what matters. $150,000 toward a, uh, an entrepreneurship program at the NAACP will most likely be incredibly successful and give us many times the return if we measure it correctly. Thank you. Anyone else? Got one her time. Did, were you making a motion? No, I'll wait until okay. the end. Um, uh, I, I do want to make a motion. Um, I know you took down the that as a, as a suggestion, but I actually want to make a motion to make an encumbrance column standard Understood. in budgets. Second. Good. Motion made by Councilwoman Hertag, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Miranda? Yes. Hertek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. And I have another question for you. Yes, ma'am. These enterprise funds, these mm -hmm. these uh, water, wastewater, mm -hmm. sewer, all, all of those, they are expected to run as a business yes, and they are expected to be profitable. Yes. What do we do with that profit? We, that's a very good <laughs> question. We do a couple of different things. Uh, fund balance, again, you know, the general fund has a fund balance, the rainy day fund for economic uncertainty, et cetera, as do the enterprise funds. If they have debt service obligations, then they have a reserve and other funding set aside to meet those debt service covenants. And also, because they're a business, they are compelled to reinvest in themselves for infrastructure, things like that. Um, but we're also you know, funding the pipes project and other things through mm -hmm. um, through debt. Yes. Uh, is there any way we can take any of this, any any of the, the funds that we are making? Because those are funds that we can easily move to a general budget because they don't necessarily belong. I'm sorry, which, fu which funding? I, um, I I'm sorry, just the, the general fund. If we could take the, the, the 
Um, this is why I'm not an accountant. Um, <laughs> if we can take uh, what we made, the extra, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, if we can, t thank you, if we can take the surplus or, or what oh, we've made on, to on top of, uh, you know, paying the bills for the enterprise funds and we have this extra money and it can go to the, to the general fund and we can fund things that the, those departments need through other means, is that something we can do? Uh, we cannot. And, okay. and, and, but I, no, I, I appreciate the question. I appreciate the out-of-the-box thinking because ideally the surplus is categorized for either existing or future expenditures based on the plan. That business is anticipated to run in perpetuity. The water department is always going to exist, the wastewater department, et cetera. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Councilman Matiscaco, you have a motion. So then I would like to make a motion that we allocate $100,000 to the NAACP. It's a worthy investment, and I know that they'll make good on showing where that money goes. Councilman Carlson you know, brought up several points. I think the return on investment in this community will be significant, you know, huge, and touch a lot of people that would certainly benefit from that. Uh, and I'd like that between now and the second reading of the budget. It's not a lot of money. It's, what, 92000 and change? Um, but it's money that will come back to us uh, multiplied uh, X amount of times because of the good work that they do. I'll second that. Motion made by Councilman Maniscalco, seconded by Councilwoman Hurtak. Roll call vote. Hurtak? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Councilman Goods? Uh, Dennis, I don't, I don't need to make a motion for the, uh, the network, do I? You need a motion for that? It's not necessary, but it's, ca it's council's discretion. Council, council needs discretion. It's our budget. Yeah, yeah it is our budget. I, you know, uh, Can I say one thing about it? Yeah, sure. Councilman Carlson, you're recognized. Just real fast, I went to Brooklyn on an arts tour a couple years ago, three or four years ago, and they spend $6 billion a year on a similar, $6 million a year on a similar program. And the way they look at it is it's an incubator for creating new jobs. The jobs of the present and the future are all related to this. So again, this is about economic development. It's not about subsidizing a nonprofit. It's about you know, every kid wants to be a YouTube star or they want to start some of the, there's, there's unlimited channels now and unlimited amounts of content. And these places are the ones that are training people for the few jobs of the future. And it's not just workforce development, teaching somebody how to use Word. It's about really training people to build value and, and creativity in the community. Councilwoman Hurtak. So I just pulled up, man, I'm glad I brought this laptop up today. Um, I just brought up the, you, you were talking about the development and economic opportunity. Uh, it says here that the Tampa Hillsboro economic development contribution is uh, $538,000. For what, the ADC? Yes. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that the one you were talking about? I think so. So yeah. is there a reason that we couldn't allocate some of that instead to I well, tried several times. I couldn't I get the to, votes, but <laughs> I, I know right now they're they. I guess they've heard Mr. Carlson's word. I know they're looking at a lot of things over in the east side of town. They, they've heard you, so they're they're working hard now. Okay. They, they're trying to get some grants going. They're trying to do a lot of things because uh, Mr. Carlson made it known that he wants them to do uh, put a little more foot on the gas with that. And I think that money is budgeted pursuant to an agreement that this right. council previously approved. Right. So. Okay. Right. Because, it, I mean, it sounds like if we want to add money somewhere, if we want to add to this $1.3 million. We need real economic development, and that's yeah. a model from the 80s that doesn't work. And it's, it's something that's nice to have. But what we're talking about, these two funds right here, mm -hmm. can radically change our yeah. numbers. Um, and so can the uh, uh, housing program. How long is this advocate? Uh, I'm so sorry. Are we having a okay. conversation back and forth? Councilwoman Hurtak, you're recognized. How, how long is this uh, is this allocated for? Each year. Two year contract that has another year on it. Okay. Does somebody out? Does somebody with staff have the answer to that? Yeah, it's a two it's a two year agreement, and I think we're one year into that agreement, so it'll be coming due um, the next fiscal year. Okay. Um, but to Councilman Goods point we have been working with the EDC I have shared yes. some of the conversations that we've had councilman Carlson in um, doing 
economic development, specific clean, um, clean manufacturing. Um, East Tampa, looking at the success or of businesses that are in the district. How do we, um, how do we double down on that? How do we invest more in the district? And so, I actually had a call with them. I don't know today's. So I think it was Friday um, about. Uh, workforce development programs and partnerships also um, surveying the businesses and the districts and coming up with a plan on how they can do more in the district I've also pulled the record of their performance um, I am a big proponent of pay for performance and that um, whether it's the NAACP or the EDC if we're providing funds um, they should be held accountable and they should be performing um, based on the agreements that is provided or what it, we're expecting to get out of that. All right, well, we'll get if, back to the- I'm, I'm sorry, Kelly, if I may, uh, Council Member Goods, if you, if you choose not to make a motion or, or do choose to, I'm not sure I, I quite got the dollar amount that you were looking for. I think we, they, so they, got, they get 108,000 now, is that what they get now? Yes, sir. Get hundred eight thousand. They're asking for three fifty, correct? Yes, sir. I know we got a lot of people asking for money. I, I mean, I, I would make the motion unless somebody had, had uh, uh, an additional hundred thousand dollars for the program. Understood. Uh, I know it's a survival program. But I don't know if Mr. Carlson want to chop in on that more, but I would I would at least go at least a hundred thousand. So you want two hundred thousand? Even two hundred. Yeah, even two hundred thousand. I'll second. I have a motion made by Councilman Good, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Carlson? Yes. Goose? Yes. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hertet? Yes. Citro? Yes. Motion carry unanimously. And can I just mention one thing about that? Councilman Carlson. What? Just one more thing about that. The TBCN, you, uh, you've heard me say this word, TBCN and TBA were both in the budget five, six years ago. And, and Buckhorn got mad at Mario Nunez and he cut both of their budgets. And so it was a vindictive thing that they should have been funded throughout and we wouldn't have been in this problem we could have our economy could have done a lot better had we not defunded them but it's one of those you know narcissistic rage things that that has really hurt our community so we need to make sure that we uh, fix these mr chairman i think uh council magoo TV, tva with that group i, I think they how, how, what, what are they what are they that, that's mine leave it alone Okay, okay. That's mine. That's, your, right, that's right. mine. Leave it alone. <laughs> I will have final statement, and that one's mine. <laughs> no, I got TBA right here. Anything else? All right. Well, we've we've, we've, we've got two, so I guess we got three to give. So. Uh, no, I'm going to make I'm, I'm going to make my statements. Councilwoman Hertek, thank you very much for your zeal and affordable housing. You've laid down the gauntlet, and I'm sure our staff is going to find the funding. I'm with you 100% on that. TBAE, I will make the motion that I would like that to be $200,000 also. Second. Not, not right at the second. I'm not finished with my statements. Oh. Okay. Chief, you and I have had the discussion. Please, just <coughs> let me have this little one, okay? I'm also asking, there are more and more and more people moving to Tampa. I want to keep the employee to resident ratio where it's at. And unless we have more staffing, that ratio is going to go out of whack. Police and fire, code enforcement, solid waste, permitting, inspection. That's my ask, to keep the employee resident ratio the way it's going. I make a motion to TBAE, Tampa Bay Arts and Entertainment, their, but their uh, monies from the city of Tampa be raised to $200,000. We have a motion from Chairman Cedro with a second from Council Member Hertak. Roll call. Goose. Yes. Vieira. Yes. Maniscalco. Yes. Miranda. Yes. Hertak. Yes. Carlson. Yes. And Cedro. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Council members, thank you for allowing me to have. Whenever it's finished. 
<laughs> you guys pull straws or something? <laughs> I think, I, 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 really, I really think that, no. I'll let you have your say at the end of this. How's that? Is that all right? That's what I'm saying, whenever you're finished. No, at, at the end of what we're doing, before we go to it, before we adjourn this. Unless this is a motion that you want to make for something. In the budget. Yes. But, but again, Councilman Sarah, Vieira. <laughs> Sure. Um, and thank you, Mr. Chair. No, it, it came to me, uh, I, I didn't think about this before. In November, we have the CRA coming for support uh, for Marti Maceo Social Club. Um, and we don't know what those needs are going to be. There, there are, could be some that have to come from the, the city of Tampa as opposed to CRA and things CRA can't do. I don't anticipate it's it's going to be a significant amount of money, but you never know. So um, pursuant to that, if I may, Mr. Chair, I wanted to make a motion um, for that fund to potentially, potentially assist Martima. I say, well, I know it's not going to be exhausted by that time, um, but that we come back with a report on that in the first week of December because we have a CRA. And, and Hi. If I may. Ms. Travis, please. Um, we have a report coming to you um, this Thursday. And on Is the it? Ebor Social Club, the, mm -hmm. in, yeah. in the memo that was provided, yeah. is that there is not an ask. They don't have an ask of us right now. There is no yeah. funding need or gap right now. We will reevaluate with them. But staff did reach out um, to them and have a conversation with them. OK. And provided that it, report. It says it here that it's in November. That's why I. I Are you? <laughs> it's is a report supposed to go back to the CRA then but they have already we've already done the work working on doing the leg work trying She's to get the information good. Yes. Wow, good, good for you. <laughs> well, you know what, then? L let's do this, then, if I may. I probably went out a little too early, so I will actually withdraw that. But it will be forthcoming, so that's a preview of things to come. I, I know there's some organizational issues that have to be uh, dealt with. So yeah, we, uh, staff have met with them, and we're prepared to report to you on that this Thursday. Thank you for your hard work. I appreciate that. Yeah, my Thank pleasure. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, I understand that this is how this is always done, but I don't feel comfortable voting on a budget right now. Do you? I mean, I don't feel like we've done any. I mean, I feel like we've come up with a million questions and maybe on the 20th have answers to those questions. But $1.9 billion is a lot just to say, well, by second reading, we'll have it done. Is that really how we do this? Look at last week, um, 240 million or whatever it was. Um, you, you know, the, it, it, we have t we have short briefings, and then we have a couple discussions where we talk about it publicly, and then we're expected to vote on these things. And that's because you know the, the uh, former city attorneys came and yelled at us, the strong mayor, former government, and it, it city council has 100 percent control of the budget, and we need to exercise that control. And I can just tell you all before we vote. I don't have the answers to my questions tonight, which I think are basic questions. And the same as last week when I asked about the 240 million. Um, it, there are too many big projects that uh, that are going on that have, are like slush funds and all this other stuff. I, there's no way I'm going to vote for it. I have voted in the past to be a team player, and and I still got attacked by mayor staff. And I'm not I'm not going to uh, vote on something I don't believe in anymore. There are a lot of changes we need to make to this budget. And, uh, and, and unless the administration is going to get, they're not going to get my vote. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Councilman Goods. When is the budget, the City Council Budget Committee coming for? Don't they come the first session or what, what, where are they at? Do we want to direct that to Mr. Massey? Yeah, say, okay, well, Mr. Massey? They, I mean, they have had a meeting. Uh, they elected not to make any formal recommendations mm -hmm. to Council this year. Uh, they've had some issues with organization. They, um, I think they have elected to meet each, each member with the member that appointed them to give their input on the budget, but they have decided not to give any formal recommendations yep. at this time. That is what I understand. I just, I just put that out there today because I'm going to tell you, I know a few may, may step away from that board. They feel it's a useless board. They feel they don't have the input or get the information they need to make rational decisions to bring to this council. Uh, they bring recommendations, and they feel the council does not listen to their recommendations. That board was put in place for them to give their perspective of the budget, uh, and they feel that they don't get the cooperation. 
uh, that they fully need to get answers to give to this council. Uh, folks, uh, they haven't had a decent quorum uh, meeting, so I can understand why they can't come give us a, a recommendation. And I said it when I was the chairman, that council members I, 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 I need to start appointing people to boards, not because they're friends, or not because just somebody be on the board, but appoint people who know the subject matter, and who are gonna, who, who are gonna be in, in, entrusted to bring the answers they need. And again, that board is an important board, and I hear all the time that certain people are on that board, they're not engaged, they don't show up, uh, and that needs to be evaluated. That is an important board. And you, you made a motion, council made a motion for us to come back in October with some other changes to yeah. the structure of the committee. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. We are going to have a committee meeting, I believe this Friday, to talk <laughs> about how they're going to function. They're, they're tentatively setting up to have monthly meetings now. We need to set it up in a way that it work, it's workable with revenue and finance in the city departments coordinating. It has to be a collaborative process really to work. So That's very disappointing. Very disappointing. We, don't, we have a committee in place and they can't give us their recommendations this year. And if I could just say a couple of things. We run on a fiscal year and so we do have to have a budget in place by October 1st. And we also have to have our public hearings at certain designated times. Councilman Carlson is correct. This is your budget at this point in time. You can propose changes to the budget. Um, but at the end of the day, by, by October 1, hopefully by September 20th, we will have a budget adopted for the upcoming year that we really need to have that in place by the law. Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you very much. This is now my seventh year and however many budgets, obviously since uh, coming on board in, in 2015, but come October 1st, October 2nd, I'm already talking to Mr. O'Hara, Chief of Staff Bennett, for the next budget, because this is a very long planning process, and that's what I learned. I came in, when was it? April of 2015, and it was already, the budget is coming that summer, and I didn't have an opportunity to really, I was new, but what I learned from that was I got in early. And that's the important part is communicating early, trying to understand, see what's coming up, any projects that I had, and that's it. So there's no surprises and we can you know, allocate the money and whatnot. I know we make last minute changes and have the discussion today, but it's a year long process. It's not just, for me, it's not just the, the, the public hearings, it's throughout the year proposing ideas. And that's just how I am. And when the budget comes, then, I am, I'm most prepared. Thank you. Councilwoman Hurtak. Um, I, I just think that maybe next year, if we could do a budget workshop, like a month before the budget comes out and look at the old budget and see like where we want to move some money. I, I, I just, this is really, and, and I understand that it's a, a year long thing, but it's, it's, to me, it's the public. It's the fact that the public is here and they're talking to us and we have to vote without, I mean, we just got their input and then we just talked about their input and how we can change it, but we don't know if that's actually gonna be able to happen. Um, obviously this year is what it is, but I, I agree with you. We, we have got to improve the Citizens Advisory Committee, but put some teeth back into that so they can come. And I mean, my, my appointee, she is, she is good. She just gave us $5.5 .5 million back. So, um, I, I, I challenge y'all to find somebody who will read a budget the way Stephanie Pointer will. Um, oh, there you go. So the two of them together. Are we having this? Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. So, but my point is, I just, I, I understand that this is a year long process, but it's a year long process for us and it's not a year long process for them. And I want it to be a year long, I, I want it to be a process for them because it's their budget. We approve it, but it's the citizen's budget. So, I, I understand that this is something we have to do, but I think we need to think about it next year, just to, even if we're just throwing ideas in public out before you come to us with a budget. It seems like that's what, what I'm hearing from other council members is this is our budget. And the mayor recommends the budget, but maybe if you knew what we wanted ahead of time, if we knew what the public wanted ahead of time, and they let us know, and we say to you, hey, let's see if we can find money for housing, then y'all aren't scrambling in the last two weeks. Because that's what it feels like we're doing now is just we're putting extra work on your and on the staff's shoulders 
to, to run around and find all this information for us at the very last minute when we would have known about this a month ago if we had done this a month ago. Just a Councilman Vera. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, um, you know, I, I would, and, and, I, and I appreciate, um, like Councilman Carlson was talking about some um, issues that he has and, and concerns. I, I, I respect that 110% it is always the time for uh, principle on things. And again, I, I, I respect that, et cetera, but I think the, the larger issue is our approving a budget uh, this evening. There's too many important issues that, that make this city run if we continue this and we put at risk um, the uh, uh, certain time cutoffs. Look, I, I'm a, I'm a in, in my private practice, private world, I'm a civil litigator, and whenever a case comes out, I get a case management order, sometimes a trial order, and it says 90 days before a trial, you got to disclose expert witnesses. 60 days before, you got to do this. You got to do that. It, well, well we're, we're dealing with, with, with cutoffs here, et cetera, with real binding consequences to the people of Tampa. So again, if certain members wish to you know, vote a certain way uh, for, for principle that they want to state, I can respect that, that's fine. Uh, but you know, my vote, in spite of any you know, other concerns, et cetera, requests coming, et cetera, you know, would be to pass this forward and get, the, get this uh, moving. We have a couple of weeks until second reading. And, uh, and we can address some issues in between. Again, I respect what other folks are saying, et cetera, but I think the larger picture should be on moving it forward, in, in my opinion, and bringing this in for a landing, as uh, Councilman Good says. Thank you. Anyone else? One last thing. I just want to make sure we cl we're clear. Councilman Good, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just want to make, make it clear, if we vote upon this tonight, that we're going to come back with some good, good stern recommendations for housing on the second reading. I, I just want to be clear that because that is the most issue that the citizens are talking about. So I just want to make sure that, that we, we, we got a stern understanding that we're going to look and see how we can move and shift more dollars on this side of the mountain to be able to deal with the <coughs> housing. It's my only. I, I, can, I can move forward tonight, but I gotta have a, a commitment that we're gonna be able to move some, some dollars someplace for housing. That's all I have to do, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Councilwoman Hurtak. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Um, I, uh, but I'm also gonna make a motion that in subsequent years, we have a meeting before the budget is announced to, to get the people's perspective and again, to get ours in a public forum. I know you come to us individually and I think that's great, but this is the only place that we can talk to one another. So if, if, if I mean, I know in theory, I know that everyone here supports housing, but talking to each other tonight gave us some great ideas. So I would, I make a motion that we have a third meeting a month before the budget comes out to really hash it out before this so this doesn't become as contentious and as long as it could be. Is this a bad idea? We had the workshop, remember? Mm -hmm. We can do it yeah, again. We, we can do it again. Mr. Chair, can I respond? Or? We can see if Councilwoman Hurtak is finished. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Um, I said the Councilman Carlson, you're you. recognized. <laughs> I said almost the exact same thing three years ago. And the result was that we had like five different sessions where we were presented how the departments work because, because city council doesn't understand any of that. And we don't understand the budget, so nobody goes through all the detail with us. And, um, and I feel like I've been treated like a child. And that's, and that it, it's, it's offensive because, you know, the public wants us to, to vote and act a certain way. And um, I agree with you. We should have several discussions. What, what typically happens is that, and I said this a couple months ago, what typically happens is that uh, an administration will say, okay, we need to talk to council. And then they ask everybody about their pet project. And I never give a pet project because I'm not going to negotiate something like that. I want them to negotiate the overall budget and overall strategy. And it's, it's, it's really bad and offensive that there's so much waste in this budget. Um, there are so many projects that every month we're asking questions about why did you put it out for bid? Why don't you have MBE? And I can tell you what's going to happen is that either before the next, before the next meeting, if we approve this night, what's going to happen is that there's going to be a press conference and the communications department is going to put up this big deal 
um, the mayor's new T3 housing program and how on their own, the administration came up with this great idea to spend $20 million on housing. And, and we, they've been planning it since way before, they'll say this specifically, we've been planning this since way before the public meeting because nothing the public said tonight mattered, nothing the city council ma said mattered. We were already planning to do this, just like they did on Fair Oaks Community Center when we, uh, we, we had a CRA meeting there with 100 people and the mayor sent a video saying, I want to renovate it and everybody laughed and got angry and said that's not what we wanted why didn't they listen to us first and th and this is what will happen it'll turn into a press conference and which is why i want i want city council to be respected by the administration and i and the only way we can do it is by exercising our power and every time we try we get attacked and they need to stop that the mayor needs to come before us and apologize to the public for using city resources to attack city council and apologize to us and tell everybody to stop it so that we can move forward with the city. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? I, I, I'll rescind the motion for now, but I, I definitely want to, I want to come back with something because I feel $1.9 billion is just a lot of money for something where I, there's a lot of these pieces that I've read through as much as I can, but I don't, there's still a lot. I, I feel like there's a lot of moving parts for $1.9 billion, and that makes me incredibly uncomfortable. I'm just to get a guarantee that Councilman Gooch, you are recognized. Well, Mr. <coughs> Hiram and Mr. Bennett we, and uh, Ms. Travis, we can look at how we can come back with some, some more dollars <laughs> of, of, of which we can reallocate or that way we can say we, we, we listen to the public. I mean, it won't be a a great amount this year because we were, we're in the ninth hour, but at least we can say we did something and moving forward, we can put that piece of the pie for the future to say this is a, a place for how? I mean, we hate to put you in a difficult spot, but we're in a difficult spot too. And it's tough times right now. And for me, everybody knows me, I, I listen to the people. I don't listen to politics, I listen to the people. And the people have told me, my constituents and the people that were here for the city have told me, my job is housing right now. So I have to talk talk about housing. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Chief Bennett, the last time uh, the last time the Citizens Budget Advisory met was May fourth. It recently met a week ago. I believe. No, I before mean, that. Before that, it was yes, it was in May fourth. But I don't think uh, I think uh, Miss Lisa Edwards, Councilman Maniscalco's aide. So there was no quorum. Right. They had to cancel they because attempted, they didn't have a quorum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Attempted to meet. Yeah. So it, it's been that span since they met. My point is, this is the first time since I was sitting out in that audience, since I've been doing things with the city council and with the various boards, committees, and commissions. Excuse me. That we've never had a report from the budget advisory. And it just seems to me that there was so something went askew somewhere. I think that uh, the next board, we need to make sure that there is meetings and set up some sort of guidelines that those meetings are attended. Um, okay. <laughs> Councilman Miranda, I'm sorry. Mr. Bennett, do you want to close out? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council, for the feedback. Um, just a two-sided comment to everything we've heard tonight. Um, we appreciate everybody's feedback, of course. The last two budget iterations that we did were under COVID conditions, and we did it virtually, if you remember. And I, and I would also state that the, the last three budgets that we worked on together, there have been these iterations between the presentation and the hearings. And I would argue that staff came back and everything that was asked, whether it was a park scenario in year one, removing something in year one, adding a mental health program to TPD in year two, that between the first hearing and the second hearing, those things happened. And so what I would ask is, I watched Mr. O'Hara, I did it, I know staff did it, they took copious notes on the list that everybody's asked for in the past three plus hours. And what I would ask for is to move forward together outside of finally the first time we're all in the same room together is to try and move this forward and allow us to bring back between tonight and the 20th 
all the things that have been discussed by the public, all the things that you've brought to us. I can tell you that we have tried to create more participation and in the, in the first year, before the first budget of the full year of this council administration, we did try and bring in staff to show what their resource allocations were, what their levels of service were, so council could give some feedback to the administration on how to adapt those level of services. But in the spirit of never wasting a crisis, I can tell you that this is probably the first budget with all the pressure that we have on us with inflation housing coming out of the pandemic, supply chain, 3,800 employees waiting for this budget to get approved based on the inflation that they've been facing, not just since we started the budget process, but for about 30 months, which I know council recognized when we brought those contracts forward. So what I'm asking is that you've made a very eloquent and very focused punch list to bring back between one and two. I would ask that you put faith on staff to do that, and I can guarantee, based on my knowledge, there'll be no press conference, there'll be nothing until we work together on the budget and the second hearing. Councilman Carlson. Mr. Bennett, what, what about if, um, along the lines of what Councilmember Hertek was saying, uh, we have a meeting on the 15th next Thursday, a regular meeting. What if we, it looks like we have a long agenda, but what if we just added an update, an interim update, so that we're not, if, 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 um, if we're gonna have to make a de final decision on the 20th, uh, is it possible to get a, a midway update? Not, not maybe a long discussion, but a midway update to give staff a chance to say what they heard and what the proposal is. Maybe I'm gonna look for report. the head nods behind me because we have a lot of people that do a lot of work. Just legally, you could request a staff report. We could not have a budget hearing, per se, yeah. on the 15th. I just want to make that clear. Make so. that. Would it be fair to say that staff could give you an update on the work that they've been able to do between today and the 15th, and then still close any gaps between the 15th and the 20th? Because I saw, I saw some workload body language out there that knows they have to go in and and do some additional work and and again between the midpoint which is kind of this is what's happened for six months this is what we predict going forward and then you know the individual calls the public workshops so you can talk together and again under this scenario i don't think you know i know all of you have said it in a different way we've never faced anything like this in this city changing levels of service under inflation you know trying to retain employees trying to recruit in an interesting work environment. There's a lot of dynamics going on, and I do think the only way we are gonna get this done is we all lean in and figure out where we can go in those couch cushions and pockets and everything else and figure out how to do that list that you've given us. I think we can do a good amount of it between the 15th and come back with a report and say this is where we are, and then close the gap between there and the 22nd. But I would ask for council support to keep the budget moving because it is important to the public and the 4,800 employees that are leaning on council support, again, with the feedback that you've given us tonight. And again, if you want something back on the 15th, it would have to be a staff report. We could not, you could not take any action mm -hmm. on the 15th. I just want to make that clear. We have to do that in the notice of public hearing, so. Uh, do you want to make the motion? No. Um, I will make the motion to come back, for staff to come back uh, with a report during staff report time on the 15th. So I guess that would be nine o'clock ish, 930 ish, whatever staff. I don't know if I have to do time for that, but uh, so just to give an update on where they are. If we're gonna have that, should we have maybe after lunch because it's gonna be a staff report may last an hour, two hours and the other people are gonna be waiting. I think that's a great idea. So after lunch. After lunch, copy. A motion made by Councilwoman Hertak, seconded by Councilman uh, Carlson. Roll call. Mr. Massey, do you want to say anything before we take? No, I just call? want to make sure the time is clear. It's, I, it would be the first item after the, the lunch recess on the fifteenth. Okay. It's on a display on the staff report that I've been Yeah, staff reports that are being heard in the beginning of the meeting, and so they're specifically asking for the staff report right. to be heard. I'll make a note on that okay. particular item. All right. Vieira. 
Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hurtek? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Will the public have access to that? It will be here. Any further discussion? Councilman Miranda, you are the chair of the Finance Committee. Well, let me say this. Item number 10, I believe. Uh, Could you close? Uh, I think it's t if you're done with comments back and forth, it would be time to close the public hearing and then to, to move forward with the motion. The we second. have a motion closed by Councilman uh, Vieira, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Roll call vote. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Hurtet? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Goods? Yes. Vieira? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Councilman Miranda, you are the finance chair. Thank you. Let me Please read. Read. Motion to adopt the tentative fiscal year 2023 millage rate. Move to tentatively adopt the proposed millage rate of 6.2076 mills, which is 9.60 more than the rollback millage of 5.6641 mills for property tax funds, which are used to support the general fund operating budget and the community redevelopment agency funds of the city of Tampa. Is there a second? second. We have a motion made by Councilman Miranda, seconded by Councilman <coughs> Vieira. Any further discussion? Rope. Councilwoman Hurtak. I'm going to support this tonight. But I'm telling you now, if I don't get my 10%, I am not going to support it. This is just the millage rate. This is oh. the budget. Sorry. This is just Learning. the millage rate. I'm ready, boy. I'm ready. Sorry. We can feel the seal. What she said. Uh, roll call vote. Hurtet? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Menescalco? Yes. Fiera? Yes. Carlson? No. Goots? Yes. And Citro. Yes. Motion carried with Carlson voting no. Thank you. Mr. Ruggiero, what is your next? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Will the finance chair please provide the first reading of the ordinance? Thank you. Item number 12, reading of the ordinance for first reading. An ordinance adopting the budget of the city of Tampa for fiscal year beginning October 1, 2022 and ending September 30th, 2023, providing for the levy as provided by law of a tax on all taxable properties in the city of Tampa and fixing the millage rate with said city, making appropriation in accordance with the provisions of said budget, authorizing and directing the mayor and city clerk as the proper authorities of the city of Tampa to certify the property appraiser of Hillsborough County, Florida, the millage to be levied for all purposes for the fiscal year 2023 in the city of Tampa, providing an effective Second. date. We have a motion made by Councilman <coughs> Miranda, seconded by Councilman Maniscalco. Any further discussion? Councilwoman Hurtak. Now I'll say it. It's not as much fun. But um really hate not knowing how things go. And then I just make a fool of myself. But <laughs> um, I just want to say that uh, I, I will. I'm, I'm going to support this tonight because I know how it needs to move forward. I, I, I would love a better system for this in the future. And if I don't get my 10%, you will not have my support on the 20th. Understood. Any other further discussion? Just want to make it clear that I'm not talking about that 10% from CRA. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 10 we're talking about the general, however you come up with it, and CRA is totally different. Understood. Roll call vote. Carlson? No. Goose? Yes. Miranda? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? I'm going to support it today, yes. Hurtet? Yes. And Citro? Yes. Motion carried with Carlson voting no. Second reading and adoption will be held on September 20th, 2022 at 5.01 p.m. Before I entertain a motion to adjourn, is there anything any council member would like to say to conclude this meeting? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for your um, flexibility tonight and for managing a, a, a difficult conversation. Councilman Maniscalco. Thank you very much, sir, and everyone here. And yes, the public will have, uh, it'll, it's during the city council meeting next, 
what is it, the, the 15th? 15th. Well, we'll have 15th, that staff sir. report. There will be public comment that morning as well. Yes, so, of course, the public is, is welcome to attend. Thank you. Councilwoman Hurtak. I have to say, I don't know about y'all, but I had fun tonight because I really like to talk to you and I don't ever get a chance to talk to you. So uh, even, uh, and I do thank Chair because I talk out of turn and you just gotta, just gotta slap me on my hand. No, never, um, never. But I, I just wanna say, I, I do, I, I really appreciate this discussion and I think discussions like this is what makes this body so interesting. And you know, it, it's, it's, it's where we actually get to to debate with one another and to really find out ways to move the city forward. And I really want to thank the public for coming out tonight for starting the discussion. Anyone else? Who do we see I'm going to make this <laughs> very much. <laughs> Council, I have, a, I have a favorite saying, and that is dialogue will solve everything. When we talk, not yell and holler, but when we have discussions, we can solve everything. I thank you for this meeting tonight. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. To adjourn? Move, motion made by file. Councilman Mascaco, seconded by Councilman Goods. Roll call vote. Uh -oh. Vieira? Yes. Maniscalco? Yes. Miranda? Herte? Yes. Carlson. Yes. Goose. Yes. And Citro. No. Motion carry unanimously. Muted. <laughs>